Welcome back to another episode of Rock Dog. What is for Bradley? This is for Bradley's fifth yeah. channel or something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing this. For my uh, porn channel. I was hoping but, uh, you were going to wear shorts. I know, bro. For Why? Why? Because you got that wide angle. You got your f***ing legs out. Damn, look at that. What? Well, you know? good today. What? No, I like the, I like the sandals. Oh, my sandals? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm in a, I was in a lazy mood. But I'm not. I'm ready to rock. Mike and I had a game plan to f***ing team up. He's going to distract you and I come in with a side wrap. Go ahead, get him. I didn't agree to anything. Get him. I just want to let you know. I don't want to do that. Bro, look at him right now. He looks like a monster did you get a pump before this? no no no, no. hold yeah. on a sec i do want to ask what, what you are you're like on top of your game right now i can tell okay. i feel like you something you go through like peaks and valleys you're at the top of a you're at kilimanjaro right now. Uh, you should get this checked out bro what are you talking about no, slide over no no no, 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 no. that's <laughs> my oh, i've sat in that exact seat every bro, time bro move the f up Look. change my energy you're the one that's been troublesome all day <laughs> no, today bro, don't even I'm get me started life. yo i'm gonna be honest bro yeah. No offense to you. It, okay. I was gonna pull out today. Why? Before this, Why? I had an injury, hey, a mouth tell injury. Them they're rolling. Are you guys? You had, rolling? Are you rolling? You, of course we you had a oh. mouth injury. Mouth injury. Yeah. You had a, so you had another facial injury. No. Well, <laughs> it's not facial. I sneezed and I bit my tongue a little bit on this side. So that's it, it, why you were gonna pull out. I I am limited on words that I could say wow. today without being in extreme oh, pain. Because now you have 16 podcasts. He's is also lying. The, yeah. He's about for sure why lying. he was gonna pull out. Do you want to know the real reason? Yeah. Of course, one of the real reasons. Bro. Okay. So, I guess last time you went on Jeff FM, uh -huh. you 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 did you like did trash promotion. You didn't promote it at all, dude. You didn't share. That's any not the Instagram reason. He's story. making this up. No, you didn't share any dude, Instagram I do, stories. I, I do that for my own podcast, bro. He's making this up. Don't listen. The real reason why I'm just throwing I, it out there could be a, could be a complete lie. Who knows? No, you know you know what the second reason is <laughs> okay. for me. Yeah. So. When I went to your gym, right? Yeah. I came down there thinking that you were going to be like, oh, shit, you know, this is dope. You finally came down. Uh, come here whenever and work out. But you didn't do that. You said, go sign up. Give him your credit card up front. No, I didn't. And That's you a gave, lie. You gave Daddy That's Steve, my fucking intern, you gave him a free membership. This is a lie. 100%. Bro, You're, not, not, You're full of lies. I, I, remember, I remember. I remember. Bradley, perfectly. I got to okay. tell you, I've done this show so many times, and it's always great vibes. And his vibes today, dude, they're dark. Yeah. They're like down tempo, sullen. You're lying. Like, yo, you sullen. know that? You sullen. know what happens when you go in like, you go in like a haunted house? Like right around Halloween, yeah, of course. And you, when you first walk in, you just feel the whole vibe like drop a little bit. This is what's going on with him? He's, he, I got he's in a haunted house haunt, vibe yes, right now. hundred percent. What's going on with everybody's going to comment? Say this guy's got bad energy. What's going um, on with you, man? Nothing. We're just leaving. We're going to Europe for two weeks, and I have to do like four or five podcasts before I leave in three well, days. You have a new podcast now. This one, and I'm look. I'm here. And for the next 30 minutes, I'm all yours. <laughs> he came in here and goes, how, quick, get on. We only got 30 minutes. <laughs> how long are these episodes? Long. Three hours. This is a long, hours, this is a know, really depends. long one. Can you turn okay, my headphones I'll get, up? I'll take a 10 yeah, minute yeah. nap or something. Is this, which one is you right here? Check, 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 Mike check, Mike took check, a bunch check, of check, Alpha no, Brain no. before this. Right now? Check, 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 check. Um, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, not a sponsored thing. Turn, I down, don't, turn down 10%. Gotcha. I don't I don't agree with Alpha Brain. It makes me feel all jittery and Are you on it right now? No, he is. I thought you were like all on it. You're all about it. You're like, yeah, I'm on Alpha Brain No, that's me. No, you talk about it on your podcast no, last time. Every he, time I do a pod, you talk about Alpha Yeah, Brain. what are you saying? I know, you I both know. talk about it. <laughs> but I don't like it. I don't take it. It doesn't work. It's a scam. But he's Whoa. on it like placebo. Hey, it's wait. a placebo effect. He takes all these and he's like, I'm so smart. I'm going to talk about myself this whole podcast. I'm not going to shut the fuck up. And that's why everybody comments and says Mike's wow. bad vibes. Went straight into this. So, so Bro, Mike talks too of, much. Hold on. You I, literally are a, a circus right now. Yeah, Mike well, you lied about much. the zoo thing because I said go get the, t the, the influencer tag and you could show up whatever you just oh, never is got that the tag. what you meant by that yeah and i didn't say you to pay anything oh like I, I told thought you Daddy said Steve, go give them your credit card or something go, no go. i said go sign the thing and then they give you a tag and you can show up whenever oh and you never okay. showed up well i would have honestly i thought we were done after that i thought it really, not saying that i need free memberships like i'm an influencer are you I want being everything serious right now because i can't tell do you think I, I don't really even said, know anymore, Bradley? I don't okay. know. Because I 100% thought I made it really clear. Like, you just got to get the tag and you show up and you're good. Just like Daddy Stevie pulls up. No, you said go take care of it with them up there in the front. You did this with your hand, this motion. It was going yeah, like this. Yeah, go go sign the fucking thing so that you get your name and you like the waiver shit. And then you can get a little tag and you show up. You just check in. It's free. I apologize, then. Yeah, I, I would never do that to you, man. 
Should I take five and come in with new energy? Maybe, maybe you should. He said he was going to take a nap on the show. Just do that. Yeah, just, just take, take a nap. A no, take a nap. Because honestly, this is the this is the thing. We are we are the middle aged men of YouTube, and and there's things that we have to work on. Nap time. Besides nap time, uh, the bigger question is when, and which one of us is going to have a kid first? Ooh. Yo, Bradley preps, bro. Yeah. I, told I don't you, prep anything. No, I told you, Bradley, dude. Okay, let me get this out of the way really quickly. So there's this like ongoing. No, no, no! Don't say bullshit. You know it's not true. I don't prep anything. Wait, hold on a second. Let me just That's say what I was going to say. I don't prep anything. Yo, wait. I prep one. Now you got haunted house five. No, I hold on, hold on. I prep one thing ever, and I didn't even get to do the podcast. And you know what I'm talking about. I prep for one podcast ever, and I didn't my, get to go. My ex girlfriend. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. What was your prep? No. Blue chip? no. <laughs> Yo, you're a fucking idiot. No, dude. This is my child. No. Oh, the clickbait. The clickbait. Oh, yeah. What's the clickbait on this? Just oh, this, tell okay, us. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. You're it's it's gonna be. It's gonna be uh, Logan Paul's friend, the guy suing David Dobrik. No, 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 uh, oh, so as you know, there's like this like ongoing like competition between two big YouTube podcasts right yeah. now, right? Raw Talk and Impulsive. And yes, Joe Rogan exactly. experience. Yeah. No, <laughs> yo, you're, yo, I fuck with that. Okay, go ahead. I know, I know what we're talking about. No, no. And, and, I mean, you can say it. Full Sand Impulsive. Yeah, I was okay. going to, but I keep getting cut off by fucking Haunted House over here. And 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 so there's so and they're doing a great job. They're securing great guests. And like, shout out to to Kyle and Johnny and everybody on that side. But they did something recently that got my attention, bro. And I was like, okay, now we're about to, this is about to be a war. Because they brought on fucking big bad Bradley Martin onto the show. And he was a part of a couple episodes. And, and the thing is, is when you say the middle-aged men of YouTube, bro, I'm here because you, you're a fucking great podcast host, bro. Like, you're, gr I really fucking mean that. And I don't know if it's like an age of wisdom, uh, just like a knowledge of topics thing, but like you add a ton to that show, and I just love doing podcasts with you. Like anytime we've done a show, we've had a, always had a great conversation, and that's why I'm back. Yeah, I appreciate that. I just want to say that. Right. Mike wants another therapy session, bro. Mike's a meat rider. No, 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 that was really dope. I appreciate. I that. mean that. I bet you everyone in the audience would agree with that, bro. When you yeah. when you when you pop on shows, like you add a ton, bro. You you know what questions to ask. You you do a great job, bro. Yeah, and I got a lot of feedback. I get a lot of feedback when I've been on that show. I get a ton of really positive feedback. I get a ton of messages. Um, I just wish I was on more episodes, you know? I think That's you all. should. I think you should be. And also, can I ask this question? I, maybe you know, because you're like closer to it, but what happened to Bob Menery, dude? That was my question. You stole that from me. I, I, I think a lot of people are curious, bro. And like, um, I don't want to like... I mean, I, it's hard because it's like, how much directly can I say about it? I just know they just d disagreed on certain things. Got it. Um, like... I, I can't speak from his perspective as far as how he feels like he was treated. Because I know he feels like he was treated a certain way. Did um, he quit or was he canned? I, I think it was kind of a mutual thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, they, yeah. So they were like, yeah, like we, a frustration we don't really want you thing. around anymore. He's like, you know what? Well, I quit. He, he was, from what I knew is he was supposed to come do that episode with the game that I stepped in on. And that he, he refused to because he wanted something done a certain way. I don't know if it was a contract thing or something. That's as much as I know. <laughs> And then we ran it a few and the feedback was really good. And they were like, we'll just do this. And then, uh, excuse me. And then they, you know, they just continue to do it because they have other people that can come in and jump on the podcast. But I didn't talk. I never got to talk to Bob specifically about like the details of it. I just know he felt a little bit slighted. Yeah. You know? And you could like see he that. He was talking about that on Instagram a lot. But there's yeah. a lot of like in the beginning of any new entity, especially a, an entity that's shared between uh people that are like in the spotlight and, and creators yeah. there's always a lot of that like hot water frustration stuff we had a lot of that in the beginning of impulsive dude like we're it, everything looks super smooth now but we're 400 episodes deep yeah like there was a lot of times where i walked off shows me and logan would get in major battles like there would be problems with the like producer we've yeah. we've had three four different co-hosts like it, it, it's you know Co co coexisting and having a bunch of different like egos and conversations and people with different ideas and creative desires for the show is, is challenging. Yeah. You know? It's not, you know. I want to ask you this. What do you think makes, obviously, Impulsive is an incredible show and I love it. But my question to you is, what do you think after all those episodes and obviously going through the learning pain of like, okay, this person didn't work out, this worked out for a certain time, then it stopped working. What do you think makes a show like truly great? 
Um, as far I, as the synergy between the the. I think I think for our show specifically, it's just it's just the camaraderie between the brothers on the show. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, there's just something to be said about the energy between people that are best friends in real life, and and also. Um, having like some level of uh, contrast between the hosts. Like you've got, you know, superstar Logan Paul yeah. kind of like sitting in the middle. You've got George, which he leans a certain way on certain things. He's got yeah. the religious angle. He's got the I family. love George. Uh, ama- he's yeah. amazing. He crushes it. He's hilarious. He's like the comic relief. You know, and then I, 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 you know, study a lot for the episodes. I try to bring a lot of questions to the table and kind of, and kind of control the flow to yeah. an extent. And I think like, you know, when you get – three people that are just really tight in real life on a show together like it's 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 kind of a yeah. sure shot you know what i'm saying yeah as far as controlling the flow do you think it's because of your age that you're better at that yeah i think like i just i think there's a certain level of just awareness of room awareness that comes into play when you when you do a podcast and there's certain uh, you can like feel certain things from the guests. I try to build a rapport immediately with the guests, and I, yeah. I, I always feel like I do a, a good job of that. And um, it, it's just an awareness that you get after years of conversations, sitting, doing this, doing it in different rooms, where you're able to kind of like navigate those conversations. And so, like, I think, yeah, I think, I think age and wisdom has a lot to do with it. You know? Yeah, yeah. What about you, Jeff? <laughs> I brought on I know you younger kids there, onto the uh, onto my podcast before, and I, I agree with that. You need some life experience to be good at podcasting. I have funny young kids around me, but I I make sure that they don't overstep. Yeah. You know, because Jeff's uh, excuse me, Jeff, Jeff, Steve's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's one of my favorite characters, man. Yeah. That guy's like just like a. Because I'll tell you why. I have a personal experience with him. We were at Chipotle. And uh, I was having some conversation with this guy who came up to me and asked me, he was like, yo, what do I do to like be in shape? And I kind of gave him like a shitty answer, but it was a really good answer that he needed. And Jeff like ended up saying, or excuse me, Steve ended up saying like, okay, thank you, blah, 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 whatever. And then he went, some other guy came up to be like, oh, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're on Jeff's pod or whatever. And his like reaction was like, yeah. And he went to go, you know how his character is like awkward? Yeah. There's no cameras. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy, this guy like, you know, when you go to Daps and he's like, oh, sh- uh, and it was like no one was filming this he's really that guy is he really awkward like that? absolutely yeah he was never uh, when i first hired him well actually when i first hired him it wasn't even a hiring he he watched a gary v tiktok where gary v said he was giving advice he was like just tell somebody you'll work for free and that's what he did for me he was like i'll, I'll shoot for free for you and then about three days in he was like hey can i start getting paid yeah. <laughs> oh wait yo he took that shit way too fast yeah that's what he does oh shit that's what he does but it wasn't even his skill or anything he, he knew nothing about filming or anything like that half the time the camera wasn't even on and i just liked his personality he would make me laugh and i think that's what it comes down to is my energy when i'm filming if i go into something already having fun the video will be better so i just kept him around to look at his stupid face and make me laugh and then yeah now he's he's my right hand man. Yeah, he's 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 really funny, man. Mm-hmm. So uh, both you guys he's a can gem. answer. Yeah, he's he's, a gem. he's great. And I, I think he's like if he continues, I think he'll do really well on like in the space overall. Yeah. Um. So as far as like finding talent, I have a because I'm curious about this just myself. Like, what do you guys do? Like, what do you identify when you look at like a creator coming up? What how do you identify someone that like you think can blow up? Because recently I've been like doing more management, working with creators, specifically in the fitness space, and I've had a lot of success. But um, what would you say when you see someone on social media? Like, what really makes someone stand out? I definitely look for originality. Something about Steven was just so different than anything I've ever seen before in a person, any human <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but that's, so that's it, the thing, because that's him off camera, too. Yeah. Like, to a degree. No, he, he's not. Everybody says break character to him but i mean he knows what he's doing he knows when he ups it yeah yeah, yeah for content course. but yeah that's pretty much him that's who he is i think i'm i'm always looking for like what besides the, what but so well besides all the fucking hot chicks that you find well that's not that's not like creative, different type that, of that's talent. not creative talent yeah, that think, i'm looking for <laughs> it's a but little uh, creative uh, sometimes they can get creative sometimes <laughs> but uh no but i'm always looking for like for like uh, what, and I say this to young creators, like what niche are you trying to fill? Everything that I do generally comes from a, like a business background because that's where I started in the brand world. Yeah. And the question when you introduce a new product or a new business or anything like that is always what hole in the market are you trying to fill? So if you have a new product, a new invention, but there's no, but the market's not prepared for it or prepared to like pay a certain price. These are just like four rules of marketing. 
um, what what hole are you trying to fill as a creator? Like, what are you what do you want to do? Like, like you know, you've seen the the you know people starting to pop off. Like, um, right now we're in the era of speed. Aiden Ross, Gideon, like yeah. the, these these dudes all came up, found a very specific lane, a very specific speaking style, a very specific way to to uh, to talk and engage with their fan base. And went full bore on that shit and created an identity for themselves and, and created a personality for themselves. So you got to really go into it with an idea of like, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. like for me, dude, I, I started reviewing burgers and now I've really fallen into that space and I'm, I'm starting to. Like, are you going to copy? So now you're not, you're not gonna, beast. No, nah, I'm started, but I am starting to build IP there. This, I've never talked about it. So you, are you going to start copying Portnoy and have the, the, I already do that. Oh, okay. But I mean, but also at the same time, like, would you be shocked if I were to tell you that Portnoy wasn't the first person ever read food? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like, like, I got into the shots. No, because people, you no, it's fine, it. but it's nice. like, but it's nice like breath. people commented on like TikToks and shit. And it's just like, bro, like, do you think this is the first dude to ever rank something one to 10? I know, I'm just like, talking shit. I just read, I read comments. I do all this. You were on to something though uh, you mentioned a lot of live streamers and i feel like that's a new wave because Absolutely. you cannot hide who you are when you're doing these long live streams yep. people so, will see through it so that's interesting point so then ultimately does it come down to like someone just being their genuine self yeah i think so i think self-awareness and knowing what your strong suits are like aiden definitely you know he figured out for a young kid he figured out who he is and what he wants to do um which is gambling. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, I've been watching uh, a lot of clips on YouTube because he's been interviewing people and getting these live streams going. So I, I don't go on Twitch, but I see what they're doing. And yeah, I think it's just, you got to find out who you are, really learn about yourself. And, yeah. and that's how you figure it out. Like for my, my first thing that clicked for me was the barbershop, just cutting people's hair and fucking with them, which is what I've done my whole life. I've yeah. worked in a barbershop. Feel super natural. I, yeah, I had that barbershop humor. I'm sure your stuff, it relates to what you were doing before, gym yeah. stuff. I would have done it regardless, like whether I was on the camera or not, the same person in the gym. Yeah. For sure. And I think that's, I think that's something to be said about that, like you as well, like your success and you're like, not necessarily it's your own, like the only niche that you're filling or like the only product that you're trying to create, but it's, you did something that was really genuine of self and it allowed you to like really connect with people. And when they found it, they were like, oh, this feels real. So. I guess that's the question because a lot of a lot of people come up and they're like trying to do all this shit now because I've talked about this before, but um, everyone wants to be a social media influencer now. It is like the most popular thing that people are trying to get into, getting out of school and joining this. And um, I guess for those people watching, which is probably a lot of people who are like, I'd love to be able to do this or be a part of this. How do you think someone can, and this is obviously not just related to specifically um, social media, <clears throat> but how do you think someone can more closely identify like, what's really for them, like what they really enjoy. Besides just like, oh, I have fun doing this thing. Like, how do you think someone can go like, oh, this is the thing for me? Like, how did you learn when like, cause I, I learned obviously the gym, I was like, oh, this is, when I do this shit, like my whole, my whole day is better. This is, I love this. Well, look at, look at how you just described it, right? Like nobody truly goes into their first video, fifth video, 10th video, 20th video, 50th video, knowing what the fuck they're gonna do and what their brand is gonna look like. I didn't either. Yo, yeah. this is gonna be my exact niche. When I described it earlier, I mean, it's good to have an idea, but you look at people like Logan, you look at people like Mr. Beast, you look at all these people, they had no idea what the fuck they were gonna do. Log or, uh, Mr. Beast was doing videos where he just said Logan Paul's name for 24 hours straight, yeah. Logan Paul, Logan Paul, Logan Paul. Yeah. Look at him now, he's the biggest YouTuber on the planet. Insane. And so the answer there always remains exactly the same, start creating content. Content. And not on some like I'm not trying to be Gary V here. Figure it out. But but yeah, but like start creating fucking content, dude. Like get a G7. Take your iPhone. The iPhone footage, a lot of times I'll prefer that over my over my videographer that I pay sixty thousand dollars a year yeah. to. Exciting shit. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like the, the the iPhone looks great. There's really no excuse for you to not be out there. If you by the way, if you feel like you have the talent and the personality and the wherewithal and the heart and the work ethic and all that shit, there's really no excuse to not be out there creating content right now, bro. Because yeah. You really do, like I, I want to straight dead pan the camera on this. You have an opportunity to do something. Like we're in that era right now. Especially with fucking TikTok, man. Whose phone is that? Like, 100%. That's not my phone. Oh, that's shit. One of theirs. TikTok is like the craziest platform right now still. And it's it's been one of the craziest platforms, but your ability to grow on that is like insane. Nothing like it. The like, algorithm changed everything. Like I'm, I'm shocked that like people can just make random accounts and get fucking millions of views almost. Like literally you can post two videos and get a million views. It's a crazy like opportunity if you have something that you think is special, like you said. And I think, I think it's just like, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I just want to encourage more people who are like want to do shit outside of like the normal 
like nine to five shit or the normal thing that the parents think is like possible to like go towards stuff like that. Cause I don't know. I, I just think it, I don't know if it's not said enough still. I think, I just think more people should, should push people towards that and set up away from it. Cause a lot of people get pushed away from it by like, you know, friends or family or people like, Oh, that's stupid. Or like, you know, their own fear of like, Oh, I'll look stupid. I'll look dumb. But like, man, when I look at this whole thing, I'm like, just, it's, it's not easy like to do it. It's not easy to put yourself out there. It's not easy to like, you know, have to deal with the criticism because like getting on the internet that's like the number one thing you're gonna like have to be okay with is that people are gonna shit on you no matter what you do but truth be told like it is not that hard to make content if you have the idea of what the content is do people shit on you people love to try to shit on me oh yeah bro i what? feel like you get an extra level of respect just from being so jacked you know yeah. like even when you asked us to do the podcast <laughs> okay, we were like, yeah, okay. oh, yeah. I mean, he's okay. fucking, he's jacked. What are we going to do? Say no to him? We we're not going to be able to go anywhere for the next six <laughs> weeks. He'll be waiting outside my door. Who's, what are they funny. saying to you? Are they, are they commenting on your body? Is it saying oh, small calves or something? Oh, you know, I mean, they could say anything. I didn't, I, I was just saying, Fuck, I'm like, kind of <laughs> covered your calf yeah, I'm like, a little bit. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to pull these bitches up now. <laughs> no, nah, man, they can say anything. Like, I've been on it for, on the fucking internet for so long. They, they just say everything. Yeah. You know, anything you could think of, they just talk shit. I feel and like it's always based too in like some specific event in time. So you've got you may have shit talkers, but they're not all shit talkers in a in a big group or army. They're bi they're different factions of shit talkers. This group talks shit about you because you sold drugs to Jeffrey Epstein because yeah. Steve told them you did. Right. This person talks shit to you because you had that war with that original bodybuilder back in 1967. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's the same shit. It's the same good. shit for real. He's good. Yeah, he's but good. not 67. But it's the same shit for me. It's like this person's like, y'all get messages still that's just like your girlfriend's getting fucked by 14 black dudes right now. I'm like, homie. <laughs> She's not my girlfriend, and like, what are you? Why are you still messaging me, bro? Yeah, yeah. Like, how is this possible, dude? You fucking cuck. And then the other one's like, you know, like, go smoke more crack. Like, people pick and choose. Yeah. But the good thing is, is that when you talk to creators that are starting, and you and you tell them to beware of that, everybody goes through that. And as long as you're in the game long enough, you'll be in the the game long enough to become Teflon. I'm fucking Teflon. Yeah. There is not, and, and I'm sure you, you are, and I would assume Bully you Mike are Mike in the comments. It just doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I anymore. could read yeah. anything now, and it, bro, even up until like six, eight months ago, it wasn't the case. Like, I'm just coming into this lane where I just like, bro, eventually you just know. Eventually you just know the deal. You know what's good. You know your value. You know what you're creating. You're a high-valued you know, man now. Yeah, what the fuck are you, Damn. like. Damn. Did, did, did you, Tate teach you that? We're gonna talk about he this. He is now? a Tate we have meat to talk rider, about big time. That oh, before we get into Tate, I want to say your true. your hair looks really good. Do you want to talk about it really quick? Let's talk about so it. So I didn't I didn't wear a hat today. Um, I did get the hair cut and like lined up and shit today, so I felt good enough to to not wear a hat. But so I go I went to Turkey, I obviously have to do this. for your audience that yeah. doesn't know. And this was just like another one of those things where people that I told about this, they were like, yo, I'm shocked how open you were about about this. Like, how, why do you feel so comfortable like sharing shit that like a lot of people don't feel comfortable sharing? Yeah. I'm like, dude, I wrote a book about smoking crack. Like, like what, what like, am I gonna, what are you gonna yeah. call me out on, dude? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I went to Turkey, um, you know what, fuck it. I'll say it, I went to this place called Smile Hair Clinic. I'm going I'm just there, gonna say straight it. up. Amazing. Yeah. And by the way, a lot of other creators have hit me up and a lot of audience. Cause your shit been, looks good. Yeah, thank you, bro. So so, so I, I'll explain it. So like, I, I posted a video about this, by the way, if you are interested about the process or anything, there's a video on my YouTube with a um, link in the description that gets you a discount if you, if you wanna do it. But I went to Istanbul, it's a beautiful city. I had the opportunity to go out there, spend a few days out there and have the surgery. And uh, they took great care of me. They had a surgeon there that did the work. And I, I, I don't know that I necessarily really needed it like immediately. Like I was getting a little thin in the back and, uh, and like a tiny bit thin in the front. But this is something as men that we're like up against. Like it, it, it bothers, it bothered me. Like, d yeah, it bothers the fuck that's out what, of me. Yeah, what? That's what I'm, that's mean, what listen, I'm getting like, I'll be honest with you. Right. And yeah. so, and so I had this opportunity to go and I was already in Europe and I kind of hurried it up and like hit him up and I was like, yo, I'm going to come on Tuesday and do this. And like really didn't do like all that much research research. I knew they had like a page and shit. And I went there and they dude extracted 4,700 hairs, follicles, yeah. follicles individually from the back of my head, then individually, uh, cut 4,700 holes in my head and then implanted all 4,700 hairs one by one in my head. It yeah. took like eight hours. Yeah. It's so nuts how they could do that. 
I've been in the hair game I, for a long time. Even when I was like 14, 15, and I first started cutting hair, I would see people come in with these big scars in the back of their head. Yeah. So that was the old That style. was the old yeah. way they yeah, used yeah. to do it. And they would take a slab out, and they would just pull it out. It looked like a slab of sushi, your skin. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I mean, I see people now, they just ha- still have that scar in their head. So he got such a good job done. I would go to that place in Turkey. He, he They crushed it, dude. They did yeah, a great job. And they, they put, and um, so what happens is, but again, there's also a lot of places here that you could get it done, and then they probably give you a better warranty or something. Yeah, like if, if you want to drop. Wrong. So the re- the reason I looked at it, and obviously I didn't have to do this, but like, it was two thousand dollars. It was two thousand dollars, Bradley. You realize that that's like forty thousand dollars. Forty here? G's at least. Yeah. So they get so they get eight. And then you got a flight to Turkey. You have hotels. Nope, nope. Let me let me finish this. In America, for a surgeon to do it, they charge between six to eight dollars a graft. So if you got 4,700 graphs down to $8 a graph, what is that, uh, $37,000 or something yeah. like that? I'm just yeah. doing quick math in my head. Um, for $2,000 in Turkey, that got me the surgery, it got me hotels, it got me all of the transfers from the airport to the hotels and to the clinic. Holy fuck. So all you had to do is buy a coach, if you want, ticket from wherever you live to Istanbul, they pick you up, drive you to your hotel, drive you to the clinic, do the surgery, send you home. So maybe $3,000. Maybe $3,000. And that's for, and, that, and maybe a little bit more. And that's, that's gotta for, be some sort of influencer rate or something. It's no, not. It's not. How the fuck Because they? they're just, they're turning tables. It's like, bro, you go to catch and, and they do a high value $37,000 hair transplant at catch, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So they get these people, they sit at the table for four hours. Then you go to McDonald's. McDonald's is serving you really good food. To, all right, fuck it. Pick it's, a different place. A different like restaurant. You go there. They're just turning tables. Instead of 20 tables a night, they do 1,000 tables a night. And so it's the same amount of money. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on. But it's the same. And, honestly, and also, the same we, quality. We, we overprice the fuck out of everything, everything. here, especially in L.A. So you got a McDonald's hairline. Fuck. Yo, I, yeah, I just, I, <laughs> you I didn't, no, he's right. I didn't describe it properly. The it's alpha fine. brains. No, no they, alpha brains. It's just flawed. They crushed it. You, you got a really good job done on your head. And I'm glad that you did it so openly and it made you happy. Uh, I've seen a change in you. I feel like it made you a better podcaster ever since you got the You're procedure ridiculous. done. Damn, yeah. No, because it hasn't. Because the aerodynamics. <laughs> it yeah. hasn't even kicked. So what I was going to say from the start is that when you leave, you come home. And after a month, 90% of those hairs that they transplant fall out. Fall out. Yeah. And it's called shock loss. And it I've all read falls, about this shit. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it all falls out. And then uh, within three months, they actually root. The follicles actually start to grow properly. Yeah. And they all grow. So like right now, it looks probably crappy. But when I go back, it, or if when I come back here in a couple months, like it'll be fully grown out. Damn. And I feel like this is a good show to talk about it on because you have a heavy male audience and probably Absolutely. a lot of them are on it's like TRT. And fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like a hundred percent. It's a hundred. Have you ever done anything else for your hair? Like, like finasteride or Medoxino? Um, Yeah. I used Rogaine for a while, but like, I don't know about anybody it's else Medoxino. or like you, but it's just like, it just feels like you're fighting a losing battle, bro. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's funny. No, I've seen success with um, a, a blend of the two in like a liquid and like keeping it on. I've, I've actually literally been like, oh, that's better. Yeah. So there is. Now, I'm not. So there is obviously like topical stuff. I would never take anything orally because orally like blood strain stuff. Yep. Yeah. It, it actually fucks with a lot of other things in your body yep. that like it's just not worth it. It's like I'd rather just not have hair versus like my dick not dick working. Dick not getting hard. Yeah. So that's like a major one. Um, but yeah, uh, finasteride and medoxinil does actually have like a, a really good um, effect if you are consistent with it. Yep. So there's tons of products like that. I'm not gonna fucking plug them because they don't pay me. But and I'm just um, not super consistent with it. And now, by the way, like I'll layer that stuff back in the topical on top of this to protect because what happens is I don't know how long we go on about this, but what happens is the hairs on the back and the side of your head will never fall out. Those are, those but, are. Yeah, no, 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 but, but. Yeah, it must be nice to have this hair. <laughs> go fuck of yourself, Of course you don't Jeff. fucking care. Bro, all I did was fuck try you, to whatever. Nah, whatever. Because of course you don't care. I'm taking, taking a little nap, nap. I'm taking a little nap. Yeah, take a nap, nah, fucker. fuck that, to- fuck that topic. Let's, if you want to learn more, there's a video and it's, yes. it's Smile Hair Clinic and, there, and you use my code, I think it's like Mike or something like that. It's on, it's in the description on my video. Someone that said, no, I'm not going to get hair put on and just fully shaved it is Andrew Tate. 
Okay. It's gone. We're going back to Andrew well, Tate Well, because now. we were going there, right? So, okay. So here. Nice segue. <laughs> sit back up, bitch. So we yeah, got an important no, This, oh, this is a very important one. This is a very important one. Um, so are you doing the, are you going to do the, uh, the tape method? Are you going to start getting people to cut your clips and like put them on TikTok and go viral that way? I actually don't hate that. No. One thing, listen, listen, if you're going to lead in with that, one thing nobody's going to take away from that motherfucker is a marketing, he's a marketing genius. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious how you think we got, I, and we, I do really want to talk about this besides Andrew Tate. We got to a point as this, like a society where we were so far to one side of like, uh, I don't know how do I say this, like gender, like, woke. okay. Woke. Okay. Yeah. The woke, woke society. Yeah. We're yeah. okay to like treat men like shit, but women can be, you gotta, you gotta kiss their toes. And then and we got so far to that side that I think that's why this is hitting so hard right now. Well, that's what I said on the last podcast that we just did with Jake. I brought up this exact point. Newton's law is that for every action, there will be an opposite and equal reaction. And so what we've seen over the past, call it five to 10 years, is this incredible pendulum swing to yeah. the left, uh, pregnant men, um, you know, woke, woke, yeah. uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, right? Just getting rammed down our throats, social yeah. media, uh, cancel culture, everything, right? Yeah. Some of it, some of it, to the to the benefit. You're starting to sound like him a little bit. The way you enunciate your words. <laughs> yeah. at the end. Oh, wait a sec. <laughs> no, because I can't throw a British word every in every eight words like him. He throws like one Bugatti. Yeah. yeah. What color is your Bugatti? Yeah. Sparkling water. <laughs> he just throws that in. But no, but this shit has swung so far to that side yeah. that it has produced a hole and a niche, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. for Donald Trump, for Andrew Tate, for for Crowder, for these type of people to really, yeah, From to Mike really. Malley. And have you noticed? Stop. Have you noticed that there's more <laughs> there's more influencers that are coming up on the same lane now too? I think that side's getting hot. Yeah. I think that side has. Are there little tater tots? Uh, yeah, similar, similar, similar um, influencers who kind of like have the you know that similar mentality in relationship to like men and like you know. Um, kind of sticking up i guess in a sense or speaking out in that sense like there's one uh what is his name sneakio Sneak yeah 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 i've been seeing this it's sneako right Sneeko. my bad i don't yeah, know no, I, I i i don't know a ton mm. about him but i have been seeing a lot of his videos lately and he but he was he was warring with tate as well right like i thought they didn't get along i've been seeing some of it on tiktok and i try my best to keep up with all of it but the the breeding ground for a lot of that conservative it's not even conservative i don't want to say that because conservative yeah, yeah. is much more middle for that kind of ultra uh, uh, right for the pendulum swinging back right, right. is on TikTok. Yeah. You could see it a lot in the comments. You could see it a lot in the sentiment and live of the streams. youth. Because that's what they're yeah, doing a lot of Yeah, but I feel stuff. like there's a balance there. You have a, Then you have a far, you have left leftist like Hassan, you know, Hassan's not completely left, but he, I think he considers himself to be a liberal, right? And so yeah. you've got some balance there. But when I go in these TikTok comments, I mean, dude, these kids are, are becoming... Um, destigmatized to racism again they're they're in the comments talking about like you know like if somebody drops drops an n-bomb in a video they're like oh that was me that was me and put like little pictures of old white men like they're becoming very uh it, it seems like that age group call of duty 2000 it, yeah but, but very outward facing with their name and everything and their profile and they're wow. okay saying that <laughs> stuff and so you're seeing the rise of these kind of um let's call them the great levelers you know, or, or, or swingers of that pendulum that has moved so far left and you're seeing them start to blow up. You know? Yeah. So you said something on Twitter the other day, like uh, we were kind of talking about just the, you were talking about this divide and like we're not going to get crazy into politics and stuff we always here. always do. But I kind of want to talk about this. Um, like, do you ever see, because I don't know, like because we talk about things on a pendulum, I think everything is like that as far as politics goes, as far as social media goes, as far as trends go, everything goes like this, back and forth or in circles, right? And it's kind of like, are we ever, could we ever as a society like get it the fuck together? No, no because, okay, this and is I a, want you, yeah. this is a multi, multi-part question. The issue is we're too big, and, and this is something that a lot of people I'm sure will resonate with. We're too busy fighting each other, fighting for the right versus the left, left versus the right, to realize that we're all being played. It's so stupid though, that's the crazy part. We're all being played by, yeah. by corporate owned entities, Big governments, business. businesses, yeah. and that divide is simply fueling and padding the numbers for CNN, for Fox News, and now, I hate to say it, but even for fucking 
uh, irresponsible internet pundits like Crowder, like other people who who are are you know like this thing happened with with the FBI raid, right? Yeah. We don't have to get into it, but Crowder said this is war. He said this is war. The idea of saying this is war after January sixth, okay, oh, is it, to me is a little bit irresponsible, and I'll it tell is. you why. And it, and it goes back to the Tate thing as well. When responsible and mature adults. Uh, with 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 semi decent or average IQs sit around and they hear this is war. They know that Crowder is 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 talking uh, in, in parody or is telling people you know it's time to fight back online and verbally and to it, legislate in legislature. Yeah. But what Crowder forgets and what Tate forgets is that not every person you're speaking to is a level headed mature average IQ adult. Andrew Tate has a lot of takes and many of them are very powerful and very important, right? For, for you know, the, the return of masculinity, so on and so forth. Right. People like us know that some of his takes are also shit, yeah, trash. Yeah, controversial. Women at, no, not right. controversial, yeah. trash. Women as property, um, um, you know. Uh, Even the body it, count on the head, that one's bro, not. Bro, a- fuck that shit, dude. <laughs> Getting a percentage of OnlyFans girls' revenues. 80%. We hear We hear that stuff and we know that's a shit take. The problem is what he doesn't realize or, or people don't realize is that he's commanding a 10 to 18 age group who has no idea what the fuck is going on in life. And so they now hear three good Andrew Tate takes and they say, that is my Jesus Christ now. That is my hero. So yeah. any take he gives me, move to Romania because the rape laws are a little bit more lenient. Any take he gives me is a good Wait, take. Wait, did he say that? He, he simply said that they need more to prove in Romania they they want real proof as opposed to and, 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 and I don't want to get too far into yeah, that okay. because it's a, a weird conversation. It's going to take more time, and I know Jeff's going to go back to sleep. But but the the idea that these people feel like every single one of I the people it. hearing their their takes is responsible right. enough to understand this is a good one, this is a bad one is is uh, an exercise in futility. But yeah, this is what I'm saying. If we talk about coming full circle to like this po- political and like coming together and actually sorting things out. That's why we can't those because at, at at all of our points in life, they're not all exactly on the same level of understanding. Like when you were 17, I didn't know the shit I knew now. I didn't deal with the things that I've dealt with all these years. So, okay, this makes more sense. So I'm picturing myself being that age, seeing everything as it was, and then just like seeing something like this, we're talking about being like, oh, this is how it should be. This is the right way or like, and then getting this sort of sense of like empowerment. And then like you said, like this is my Jesus Christ now. And then kind of not being able to discern whether or not everything that's being said is like best fit um that's why i think though it's like no matter how we do this is like dude, we're never going to have that like level playing field of like yo this is like we could all win together and that's the crazy part man like the crazy thing about it all is like it could be that way but at the same time it never could and that's what fucks me up mentally because it's like it's just it's not up for me 33 year old bradley martin to say that guy should understand what i understand at 17 years old because i didn't understand it as well so I, I just, I, I don't know, I like to talk about it just so that whoever the fuck is listening to this would be like, oh, this is a good point of view. Um, let me kind of think deeper about the things that are being said or the things that are fucking, you know, being fucking crammed down me on fucking TikTok. Cause it's, TikTok's crazy, man. I've, I even know what it is. And I open that app up sometime and I'm like, I'm scrolling. And next thing I know, I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? I spent like 10 minutes and I'm like, had to pull myself away from this shit. I can't even imagine being a kid that like, has nothing else that they need to focus on. And they're just like zone the fuck in. Yeah. Like people are just like zombies of that shit. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's wild. What do you think about Tate? What's you want to hear my Tate take? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I know I'll you want to fight him. I'll be honest. Uh, no, I don't give a fuck. Um, I actually, I don't give a fuck about him at all. I <laughs> was scrolling down my TikTok the other day and you know what I did? You hold on to the videos of Tate and you just, you hold it for a sec and then you go down to the little button that says not interested. And if you do that enough, and it's not a problem anymore. Yeah. You know, you avoid it. But I, I get like him influencing all of this new generation. Because he tried to get, cancel can saw the cancel problem. on this guy. He got a big Instagram post. It's up to yeah. 1.4 million. Yeah. And, 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 and like that's kind of. It gives go, him what go, he wants, go though. Ahead, Jeff. I wanna, yeah. No, I know that. See, obviously, a lot of people, it's pissing a lot of people off and they feel like they need to do something about it. So 
I understand that part of it. For me personally, I don't give a fuck that much. I've seen people like him pop up before. I respect the marketing strategy. Absolutely. I feel like it's a bit of it is luck. It he just got lucky with the way he was doing his thing and the algorithm on TikTok. It works for these smaller accounts to go viral. Like you were talking about at the beginning of this episode. Yeah. It makes sense. But also I think that's right place, right time. A little bit of luck mixed in. A little bit of yeah, uh, give him credit. It was a smart strategy, but after that, I don't see him really, unless he grows and transitions into something new and keeps growing, keeps reinventing himself, then I think he'll have more of a shelf life here as an internet personality or whatever, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Know. Yeah, yeah and, and on that note too, like, there's a, there's a really good chance that a lot of those clips that he's being canceled for, per se, are old clips. And I think there is an opportunity for him to take his ultra fame. Like he's he's hot as fuck right now, dude. One of yeah. the most searched people on the planet, and start to uh, create a little bit more of like a. It's it's not even like because the last thing he wants to do is become woke because people would hate that and start censoring oh, yeah. himself. Yeah. But it's just like how do you? This world, unfortunately, is still in a way where you kind of have to play by the rules, dude. And, and I don't even mean this from like my personal morality standpoint on it. And like, but like, dude, like, just the way things are, the platforms just ain't having it, dude. Like, you yeah. saw what happened with Trump. And I'm not saying that that's right. I'm not saying that's okay or not okay. I actually don't have much of a fucking stance on it. I think it's very complicated. Yeah. But I think at some point, like, you, you, if you want to, because they will put a clamp on this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, if people keep making those posts and people keep making enough noise about it, we know which side social media leans towards. Yeah. It is, and they're you know, definitely aware of him. You asked yeah. something in the beginning of the episode. You said his strategy that he's doing on TikTok. Do you like that? Would you consider doing that? Are you going to have your team start doing that with your videos? Mike said yes. He said, I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Me personally, I don't want to be forced down everyone's throats. I, I feel like you get burnout. If I see people for too long, I get sick of them. That's been me with everything. That's been me with music. That's been yeah. me with every type of art form, entertainment in my life. I've just grown out of everything. And I don't want to be shoved down people's throats. I want people to want to watch me and they go look for my shit. That's why yeah. I like YouTube because they have to click your videos and they have to commit your podcast. They're committing two, three, four, five, fucking seven hours, this podcast. You know, those people really fuck with you and they want to see you. I don't want to just be like, oh, let me, everybody that opens their phone, they have to now listen to Jeff rant about something they don't give <laughs> yeah. a fuck about. Can you imagine? <laughs> but that's what's happening. And I've never seen a platform or a, a creator like that before where he was able to, where how he's been able to infiltrate you at all times. <laughs> yeah, like, bro, it. like I'm not... I'm just, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night. I just want to give a quick scroll. Like, I mean, this has never happened before. Never. Never, never. before because he combined a, um, I don't, like, I don't know how much time we're spending on this, but like he combined a marketing tactic with a, with a social media creatorship. He's the, the first person to ever do it. He said, yo, pay for my system, yep. create videos for me. And for that, and for that, you'll be incentivized. And honestly, like, dude, you got to give the fucking dude kudos, whatever your mor moral concern is with him. Yeah. It was a genius tactic. Bro. Yeah. He came, he crushed it. I think it works, but I don't know. I think people just get burnt out. Yeah. You know, it's funny before you guys sat down, the, the, the one thing that I did plan to talk about before this podcast was being burnt out, like just in general, not in the sense of burning someone out as far as your content, um, but just you two specifically in your relationship to at, at any point in your life, whether it be now or recently or earlier on in your career, have you ever felt like truly burnt out where you were like, I don't want to do this shit anymore in any sense or in relationships like burnt out where you're like, you know, uh, for example, my, I had an eight year relationship where I was like tumultuously trying to f make it work. And I think like four years and I'm like, this is never going to work. And I still tried for four more fucking years and I was completely burnt out at that point. So have you ever, um, and we could talk about this for however long, doesn't matter. Uh, there's definitely no timestamps on how long we talk about stuff. <laughs> Mike, but Sorry, I'm no, used you're to good. impulsive and, <laughs> I know, and, I know. and Logan's kind of like very specific on like how long we yeah well that's how that <laughs> yo you're so fucking stupid <laughs> okay yeah, he, that's how that show is that's how it's very fast paced and we go yeah. topic to topic and and this show like i know you only have 30 minutes but i have like fucking <laughs> i know hours. i have a limited amount of words i can say before this tongue injury yeah do you ever felt burnt out yeah that's yeah the question. once a week every week yeah of course why you looked at me like i'm crazy for that you feel you once do, a week every week you do youtube podcasting you do vlogs Run a few you have businesses. A workout program. You got yeah. a ma meal preps. You're probably cooking up chicken and putting it in no, Tupperwares. No, no. You don't get sick I of that. I own a food company. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, uh, sorry. You know. We're not the same on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just fucking around. No, but actual, like, have you, I, I, has there ever been, I guess I'll rephrase the question. Has there ever been like a really big moment in your life where you felt like severely burnt out? No, it's just momentarily little, you know, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I feel like I share too much. I was always a private person and now I'm sharing so much of my life. But again, the effect that that has on people and if I'm able to help people and influence people the right way, I feel like it's, that's my calling in life. I got to do it. What the fuck am I complaining about? Yeah. And do you think the podcasting, obviously now you're, you're going to have two, the off the meds is with Tana, right? No, that's not real. That's not real? <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about? It is Bro, real. Bro, no. Why is that Wittick just made a graphic for it? it no, doesn't that's what he wants to call it. It is. He talked it, about it on Jeff FM. Yeah, it, it's and, and Tana, did talk, Tana no, talked about doing a podcast with you. Wait, you I, have a title it's, for it's, it? It's and a you didn't new tell thing me? for me. Uh, yeah, it's called Off the Meds. How come you didn't tell me? Because we're both on and off meds all the time, you know? I'm getting surgeries and taking meds. I'm you said we were going to have a, a reoccurring show. We can, but wow. I think I this, thought we see, were going to have a reoccurring talk show. Talk about getting burnt out. This is a new thing. I'm doing a podcast with a woman. <laughs> it's a different type of energy. We talk about different You're topics. getting burnt out in two episodes. She gets things out of me. She might never show up again. You Dude, know, and if I'm that honestly happens, shocked because I try to get her for six fucking months to sit here for two hours. If you got a podcast with her, I'm really impressed. Dude. I know. I know. You are fucking. I'd be impressed too. If she's it, sober. If it works out. She she's sober, sober right now. now. It's changed everything. Really? And yeah, I she's think super, she's super locked in right now. Yeah, I think she likes that about me. Well, I remember when I got sober, I needed to hang out with other sober people to be Completely inspired sober. by them. Yeah. 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 But wow. I don't know. Oh, well, I don't know how long she's like doing that for. No, though. she's already broken it. Okay. I didn't want to say, I didn't <laughs> say it. <laughs> she did wanna, her her last TikTok, she was beefing with Addison Ray's dad and she was slamming down a glass of wine in it. Okay. So, she, so yeah, she's back on, see on the med and she'll, you know, on and off the on meds. On and off. Yeah. So yeah, if that works out, I'll be happy. I enjoy it. People enjoy it. So yeah, Mike, you might have your things to say about Tana. <laughs> What's, hold on her, a sec. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, talking Certain about? things don't make shit up. <laughs> her body count or whatever. I See, I look at her as an equal. And <laughs> I know you have your Andrew Tate takes about this, but I am partnered with a woman and we are a 50 Would you 50 let her move your truck? Yeah. Would you let her move your truck? Yes or no? Now, yes no? this will get clipped out and taken out of context. <laughs> I have... I'm not getting into this shit, man. No. What the <laughs> fuck is this shit? You gotta understand, bro. I'm an ambush. alpha brain right now, so if you come for me, I have something to tear you apart. I wouldn't let you move my truck. Okay. I have a 50-year-old truck. It's a classic car. This, you gotta wiggle the fucking key, give it a little gas to start I, it. I love those. Yeah, Bradley could thanks, drive me it. too. I could drive it. Yeah, I would let you drive it. Thank you. But you don't think with enough instruction but you could get to LA it? this LA influencer drives a Range Rover. Yeah, it's no, mad at too. This car's it. sexy. I just got it mad. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the only things I ever bought, dude. Yeah. That in the house. That's it. And the board ape. Oh, and the board ape. Yeah. That's it. Is that what it's like being Logan Paul's friend? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really nice, quite, It's like quite nice. That's yeah, nice. But yeah. uh, burnout, I honestly, you brought up relationships. Yeah. If you put me in a relationship, I feel burnout immediately. That shit I, whoa, 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 I but not, suck at. But not immediately. Immediately, bro. I, I, I have to go... I, we've talked about this all the time every time I come on the show. I have not been to therapy. I need intimacy therapy terribly because, bro, I cannot. Like, when I start to feel the idea of being with someone, like, for a long period of time, and maybe it may, people say, like, oh, you just haven't found the right girl. Maybe that's true. And maybe if I do find the right girl, then then it'll be different. But, like, dude, I get, I get like. But is it the I idea? I start to feel, like, really, like, su I'm suffocating. Is it the idea that, like. It's that one girl, or you have to like what can problems can it's come around? It's not arise? even that. It's just I think I just need to like talk to someone about it. It's just like it's. Be, I, I think part of it is the reason I don't feel burnout for what I do because, dude, I'm like three, you're in control of it. I'm in, I'm like remember we talked about the yes, steering wheel. Exactly. I'm like three plus years deep now on weekly uh, YouTube uploads, weekly impulsive uploads. I wrote a book. I have a million fucking business things going on at all times. Yeah. And I never feel burnout in my career stuff. Ever. Never once. Bro, I haven't missed an episode. In, bro, I've lost friends. I've gotten COVID. I always get my shit out, bro. Yeah. I'm uber consistent on all, on all of the fucking platforms, right? And I never feel burnout. I love doing that shit. And every time I, like, start to talk to a girl or, like, you know, it, it, it's, like, 2 p.m., 
and they're like hanging around the house like and, and that's why maybe i just haven't found the right girl because maybe i need a girl who's equally as hungry as i am yeah but like i start to feel like shit dude now i gotta fucking figure out where we're eating tonight and this and that but all i want to do is fucking work bro all i want to yeah. do is create and come up with the next idea and edit and business idea and burgers and this and that and it just feels like it gets in the way and but but i sometimes feel like i'm making a mistake because i'm getting old and i don't have a partner you yeah know what I'm now where does that end that's the question that is a good question i make the excuse a lot that and i don't i don't, I don't know if it's an excuse or if it's the truth i'll say that i can't be in a relationship right now because i'm too focused on work but when does that end when am i going to have it dialed in to where I don't because we're creative I think we're all in the same position yeah, yeah, as a creative you, you want to use your creative energy your creative times of the day to either edit or think of ideas and the way I am I put a lot of that energy into the other person when I'm in a relationship yeah. and I feel like one day I'll get to a point where I don't know I'll have my life set up like Mike, you just bought a house. Did you feel like the house was going to be the step that okay, yes. now I can get in a relationship because yep. I have my life figured out? But yep. now you're more lost than ever. Well, now you we're also <laughs> we're all in the Wait same boat. Wait a second, How did, no, I don't think I that's mean, you true. Just I think said I was it. more lost than I was smoking crack in my grandpa's <laughs> yeah, house. That's more lost than you, know, yeah. you know what I'm no, saying? No, but you, I'm going off of what you just said. Like you can't figure I out. You need to talk am. to a therapist and stuff like that. I feel lost, but also I, I, I was in a bad accident two years ago, so I'm still figuring out my entire life i've shot so david that, dobrik let's go baby. <laughs> yeah no. <laughs> yeah yeah so okay i wanted to, to both your points because i can i have obviously feel similarly in certain ways um i i feel like you know you say he bought the house you buy the house what is it four million dollars shouldn't have bought the house nft money thing that was the whole thing right <laughs> yeah but whatever right but you have the house now and like for me, businesses that i'm building brands that i'm building like management stuff that i'm working all the stuff that i keep building and the idea is when is it when is it enough? The fucked up thing about all this stuff that I've realized is like the more I get, the more that I'm like in control of, it's almost like the more I need to work. And you feel like you're gonna get to a point where you're like, well, I have so much that I don't need to keep working, but like then and now you I can to, devote all my energy to my partner. Yeah, and well, it when just does doesn't that? exact doesn't work. That's what I'm trying to realize is it doesn't happen. Like, but I have gotten a little further along the line in my, my personal brand, at least with Raw Gear, like building out a team that can make this be more efficient, even if I'm not doing anything. That's it, yeah. And then I've realized, okay, if I can, if I can take that 10 steps, then I can do the thing, which is give my time to a, a woman, right? Because in this case, it's like, you buy the house, I buy the house and I'm like, well, fuck, I gotta, you know, I gotta make sure like, I gotta either recoup that cost or I gotta keep making these mortgage payments or I gotta make enough to continue this like, like version of my life, right? So it's like you get a bunch of stuff, and I think people have this misconception that it's like you just. I'm I'm definitely not telling you guys right now that like having money doesn't make you happy because I absolutely do think that money can add to your happiness. Um, obviously, can't buy it, but it's an interesting thing that happens with money and specifically taxes in California and just money in general is like you make a bunch, and then you're like, oh, I actually don't have as much as I thought once you start spending it on things that like you've always wanted, like a house, and then you kind of have to keep going. You yeah, hundred percent. And you have to keep creating, and like for, for me and for us, I think the toughest thing is like, is the idea that we earn money through creating always on content. And so like, it's one thing if you're an author and you're like for two months you're busy and you have to write this book or three months you're busy or four months you're busy and then you can really pour a lot of time in and you get a break until you have to put the next book out. Yeah. Bro, internet relevancy is based simply on consistency and longevity. When yeah. you go away, you go away. Yes. And that mean, and, and, the, and there's a few exceptions and outliers, the Logan Pauls, the people like that that can take a year off and they come back bigger than ever. And maybe we can do that. Maybe we're those type of people, right? Maybe we are. But when you're in it, you don't feel like that. You yeah. feel like, yo, if I don't get this shit out, then the next week's numbers are gonna be lower and then the ad revenue is gonna be lower and mortgage payments are gonna be creeping up on me. And honestly, like one of the scariest things that I did was buy that fucking house, bro. And yeah. and I love that house. And I've never, I I couldn't be happier with that, with I that decision. Been, I haven't it's, been, by the way, because they don't, they, you know, you guys go there and- Bro, you come no over whenever no you No white parties and H3 podcasts, but I'm not there, you know, it's like kind of like a- You're an asshole. It's like a little interesting dynamic. I'm like, that's cool. That's sick. Uh, What's uh, up with that? Hey, Mike. I, I love what you did there. That house is a huge accomplishment and we're really proud of you, man. I know you're stressed out, but you're doing great. I'm really proud of you. You inspire me. Um, what were we talking about? Thank nothing, you, nothing. Thank no, you. no, no, but I'm no, but serious. Though, go ahead. First of all, Bradley, 
you can come over wherever the fuck you want. You can show up. One thing I will say is I, I still don't have furniture. It's coming soon, which as you just said, was another thing. I have to make six videos to a full, like the house is a, yeah. is the most insane. He's been living suck. there for like three months now. Still well, doesn't furniture have takes, furniture. No, furniture takes months. Well, but he, I also know he bought the most expensive furniture ever. Which is yeah. the most beautiful furniture, though. Yeah, restaurant. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So that's that's because because everything that I do, honestly, as much as it seems like it may seem outlandish or whatever, um, and even does at times seem outlandish to me, it's always rooted in very specific objectives. That that is a, a view house in Laurel Canyon. That prior to adding for any kind of furnishing to it, the the real estate agent said, "Yo, listen, like everybody wants this house. Oh, it's it gonna was, go up, it, bro. It was a it was a bidding war to get it. It's a house that never goes on sale in the fucking hills with a 180 degree view over the canyon. <laughs> if you want to, this this is what gave me a little bit of solace. If you want to rent this house out, the LA rental market is disgusting. You will make so much fucking money if you simply furnish it properly. Yeah. So I hear that." I furnish yeah. it properly. And that stuff that you, you bought lasts forever and you could resell it for 100%. crazy value. I'm not saying you made bad decisions at all. I'm not at all trying to say that. Yeah. I think you got, I think it's amazing. Yeah. I think you fucking crushed that. But it just, but to your point, it just makes you feel like there, there's, there's something to be said about life prior to attachments and whether that be oh, love yeah. interests or, um, or housing or career paths. And that's why, remember when I, I said on the show that time, like you need to embrace the idea of being lost in life. Yeah. It's the most clipped, one of my biggest clips ever, and it's the most clipped off this show, but I said you need to be, get comfortable with the idea of being lost. There's just something really special about having the idea in life or the opportunity to at some point say, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm out. I'm yeah. out, I'm going somewhere else. I'm leaving this state, I'm leaving this city, I'm leaving this person, I'm fucking out of here. And it's one of the scary things about commitments in life and it's one of the scary things about becoming a quote unquote adult is that you lose that privilege. You lose that privilege of just saying, yo, you know what? Every dollar I've ever made, I put in my bank account and I could go wherever I want and I could take the next, bro, I, I used to count in my head. Yo, I have $3 million after taxes sitting in a fucking account. I can spend the next 20 years doing nothing. And that made me feel good. Like, yo, if I fell off tomorrow, bro, I'd be okay. Now I got a fucking mortgage to pay. I got bills to pay. I got electric to pay. I got, I housed the German. He lives there. He relies on me. Responsibility. I got yeah. responsibilities. And, and, and honestly, like I ran away from that shit for so fucking long. And, and, and there was something honestly to be said that made me feel good about running away from that shit, bro. And now I'm not running anymore. That scares me. But what the scary part is, because now just you have more like solid responsibilities. Man, I'm just weird, bro. I'm a bit strange. No, I, I agree with you, bro. I was actually listening to you right there and I was like, damn, you're right. My happiest moment in my life was when I took the jump from living in Staten Island cutting scumbags, people nodding out on heroin and Oxycontin. I was one of them. Uh, yeah, of course. That's why I relate to you so well. I feel like I've known you my whole life. And then when I moved to Miami, I was like, this is fucking sick. I just took this leap. I dropped everything. I had a business built. I said, fuck it. And then I was able to successfully just restart here. And I love that. No responsibilities. And I was able to make that move. And I knew in my head, I was like, damn, this has got to be the best year of my life. It was probably around 20. And yeah. I had a good run with that, but then, you know, I started chasing money and stuff like that. But that yeah. was probably the happiest year of my life. Yeah. With everything. I, I, it's so funny you guys said the same. And I have a similar exact like experience of that in my early 20s when I didn't have anything. And I was so focused on like, as soon as like Instagram started to kind of take off, I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. I'm doing what I love. And like, I have no holds, no attachments to anything. Um, obviously, I had some love interests and shit here and there at the time, but it was all just like, one and done gone and i think it's really important for people listening to this podcast to realize if you're like <clears throat> shit any age and you don't have a house yet and you don't have a kid yet uh i guess not any age yeah actually any age if you don't have these ties but specifically to the younger audience who's like i would say 16 to like 24 if you're like trying to figure your shit out don't be afraid to like fully fucking send it wherever the fuck you want to try because there was a point in my life when i lived in i lived in a fucking truck for four months Mm -hmm. is just trying to figure my fucking life out. And it's like, 
that's like that's a real moment i look back and i'm like holy shit i actually slept sideways in a little ford ranger like through my to my back seat like this uncomfortable as fuck and woke up to the sun and i did that for about four months and i'd like drive and like sleep under like overpasses and shit and i look back at that point in my life and when i think about that as fucking like terrible as that may sound bro i was so happy yes. because I was doing, I was like chasing something. I was like, yo, I, I love the idea of being able to accomplish this. And that's all I cared about. And I didn't have like a tie to anything else. Like I didn't need to be somewhere. I just need to be wherever like I thought was best to try to move like my needle forward. And I just think it's so important for younger kids to, to realize like, don't hold yourself up to things because of like parents or friends or where you live. Like just go like, I'm not saying go somewhere and try and be homeless or live in your car, but like Fuck it. Well, like, that's sometimes what it takes. And we've, yeah. had, we've had professional athletes on Impulsive that have talked about this idea of, you know, I, I worked my ass off. I went to school. I went to high school. I went to every fucking practice, every two a day. I went to college. I went to every two a day. I played every fucking game. I didn't miss a game. I went to the pros. I played 10 years to get to the Super Bowl. And when I got that trophy in my hand, I wasn't, ha I didn't know what to do with it, bro. It wasn't like this. It wasn't like this moment where I thought it was going to be like, yo, I've accomplished everything and it all led up to this. The, the art of it, the story, the fun, the excitement is in the chase, bro. Yeah. It's in that hunt and those those feelings of like, yo, I'm putting in the work right now. And, the, and those little accomplishments, those little accomplishments that you have when you, when you make enough money to get out of the truck for a week and you get to stay in a hotel and you're laying on the bed <laughs> and you're so connected and rooted in the journey in that moment. Those are the special moments in life, the building. I talked to Logan about this when we were out in London, when we, he was launching Prime in London. And we were on the top of this two-decker bus with, uh, with Gideon and, and, and KSI, and we were driving around London on top of this bus, on the microphone, you know, yelling at people, drink Prime, drink Prime, and throwing Prime to people, and they were catching it, and everybody was smiling and having a good yeah. time. And I whispered to Logan, I said, bro, all we ever talk about is the exit. The billion dollar exit, bro, the big B, when it all change, when everything changes. This is the fun. This is the fun. It's not the exit. Yeah. The exit is just a is just a paycheck. And it's and it change and everybody's life changes a little bit. But this is the real story right here is building it, dude. Why why do you think we're so caught up as people to to focus on like the end result? Why do you think humans are? Well now are so it's shoved in our faces what everybody else has. You got to constantly open up your phone and just see what other people are doing. Andrew Tate, what's your what color is your Bugatti? Yeah, you know. Um, I think it's just one day at a time. Like Mike was saying, enjoy the ride. That's where the fun is. The little wins are just as good, if not more satisfying than the big ones. Yeah, wins. I mean, the crazy part about it is like nothing else really matters except that that process that you're in. Because obviously, someday you say you get the exit and you get all the money, and then yeah, like you could probably still have a lot of fun. Uh, not that you wouldn't have fun then, but you're always gonna look back on the climb differently than you're gonna look back on like when you're chilling on your yacht or wherever the fuck you're at in fucking Monaco or fucking London yelling at people, whatever. People like, that don't, you know, trying to spin up models that don't matter. I don't, like wanna, all this, I don't yeah. want a yacht though. I don't really want a yacht. I, I, yeah, I'm just saying you might be on a yacht. That's more responsibility than you gotta pay the dock thing. That's a lot. You gotta pay your captain. Then we're back to fucking just square four. One. Just fucking charter a yeah. boat <laughs> and it's less responsibilities. I didn't say you actually had to get a yacht, Jeff. I just want to make that clear. It just, I'm it was just like getting a stressed out. Yeah. God, dude, insurance, like, fuck, I need insurance. a yacht. I need a boating license to fuck. drive it myself. Imagine. At school for that. Fuck, dude. You don't need to rent jet skis. You got to have the fucking license yeah, yeah, for it. Yeah, I love riding states. jet skis. But, 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 but my point is like, it is always, your, your, your life's, I don't know, to the people listening, like your fucking trial to get to that point is always going to be the thing you look back and you be like, damn, I remember this. You're not going to necessarily like sit at the top with $100 million and be like, this is the coolest part of my life. You're just spending money and eating food, which is dope. But like the journey there, especially with the people along the way, that's the, the fucking people's beautiful. everything. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what was the first private jet I went on. Who's G5? I don't remember the first trip to fucking you know this place or that place. But I remember taking all my money with my friend Patsy in Milford, Connecticut and sitting in his parents' kitchen and trying to pick the penny stock or weed <laughs> stock that was going to make us enough money so that we could get an office and set up, a, a set up some monitors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like those memories stick out to me so fucking much, bro. Yeah. Of sleeping on the couch and just scraping by and like trying to do this or trying to do that or, or working the, the dishwasher at TJ McKiff's in Milford when I was 15 years old and just like all of those memories for some reason just stick out so much. They're just yeah. so ingrained in me 
And it's just like, it's weird. I get a lot of shit now for being, you know, 37 and still doing the things that I'm doing. Yeah, right? I get and, shit all the time too. Right? Yeah. But for me, it's a little bit different because like a lot of people are, are, you know, we're talking to these people out there that are watching in their early 20s and, you know, their mid 20s and their teens. I didn't have a teens. I didn't have an early 20s. I didn't have a mid 20s. Those years don't didn't exist for me. They just didn't. I was in a I was in a a a a, a different existence. I was in a, an other side of this planet that just is a place that I would never wish upon anyone. I would never want anyone to go to. You know what I'm saying? And so like I I started 12 years after everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Or 10 yeah. years after everybody else. And it's I, I don't like to use it as an excuse, but a lot of times like I feel like I'm just I'm, I'm behind because of that you know what i'm saying developmentally because there's a uh belief and a lot of study behind the fact that you don't develop as a drug addict that you that you the the age that you become addicted to drugs is the age that you stop developing at and so if you're an addict from the age of 18 to 28 by the time you get clean at 28 you're still you're 18 years old you know and so if you take if you take eight years off my life or nine years off my life i'm operating as a 29 28 or 29 year old right now you know what i'm saying yeah so um you know, enjoy the journey. That's yeah. for that's for sure. It because that's the part you don't know right now, as you're watching this, that the stuff that you're doing will be the stuff that you remember. You think it's all garbage. You think it's all minutiae, like dumb yeah. shit. But it's the stuff that you look back at. Absolutely. And you, and you, and you so remember. so back to the question too. What what do you think when? Why, excuse me. Why do you think we get so caught up in the end result? Because obviously he said like we see the shit on the internet. We're like, what the person has, the Bugatti, the cars, the stuff we see. We're like, fuck, I need to be there. I'm not there. How do I get there? And we're caught up in that, like the future. Why, how come we're less present? Like, why do you think as, as a whole we're less present? And we're not as like, you know, like we're, we're just too fixated on like, man, I got to get to that fucking point. Why or, or why have you felt like at points in your life you were like, man. Well, because what is there, what's attractive about the process? You know what I'm saying? Like, like dude, everybody... From a from a from your childhood, your parents tell you, "Yo, if you eat your dinner, you get to have dessert. You get to have ice cream, and your eyes light up. And you know, if you make it through four semesters at school, you get to graduate, and they give you a diploma. And you're always so focused on that end goal. Yo, if I make a million dollars, I could buy a fucking this crazy car. If I make this amount of money, blah blah blah, right? And you're always focused on the end goal because there's nothing sexy about a process. There's nothing nothing pretty or shiny or new about that." But the, 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 the thing that people need to understand is that the real value of the process is in the lessons that you learn. I'll explain something yeah. based on what you just said. Everything that I have and my ability to sit here and even have conversations about things that are even meaningful to anyone is because of what I've went through. And because of my ability throughout my time in my, my childhood and how much time I spent thinking about everything that had happened to me and why did it happen to me, like trying to figure my life out along the way, is the reason why I could sit here and not only A, have these conversations and have a successful podcast, but B, deal with all the problems that may arise in the future. So I guess I'm challenging the people listening, like the, the present that you're in that seems lackluster or not the end result, really give yourself time to like truly value it, not just in retrospect how we're speaking of it, but currently because, bro, I'm not kidding. My ability to deal with everything is because of all the shit I dealt with and the things that I've learned through it. But it was because in, in all those moments, I always spent so much time and maybe it was this anxiety prone or the way that my mind works to just like wrapping my mind around the same shit over and over. And in some cases this, you know, not, not in a positive way, but in a way enough that it like, it forced me to almost like define each moment in my life, like, in the present as much as possible because I felt like sometimes I couldn't take myself out of it to keep going forward. I was so caught up with certain things or certain moments or certain relationships or certain things that were said that I'm like, man, if I just said this or if I just did that. And it, and it made me, in retrospect, looking back now, a better person for who I am today. And not only a better person for who I am today, but also a better person uh, who would be more adept to deal with everything that I want to do going forward. So there is this like, weird like i get it i totally understand it but i think it's really important for people to be encouraged to obviously live more in the moment and the more in the present not just because like genuinely nothing else exists except for this moment right obviously like everything else does exist but it's i'm, I'm saying like you and the way you move and where you go in your life isn't dependent on just like where you think you're gonna go but where you are right now yep um, but also too, the, like I said, the things that you learn in those moments right now are so 
important for everything else that you're supposed to do in your life. And I just want that to be said because I, I add, that's why I asked this question. I want your perspectives on it. And it, they, they, it like both align with this, like that, that being more present. And I'm not going to talk. We talked about this before in a podcast yeah, again. Yeah. I don't know how I got back full circle. Well, to that's it, but. good. I mean, it's an important point. But it's just like you can't you can't teach this shit, bro. It's like it's. I, I just tell people all the time, just as like a final note on it. Put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Yeah. Because nothing breeds progress and and character growth like desperation. Yeah. And that desperation can come out of anything. It could, could come out of going and showing the fuck up when you have so much anxiety that you didn't want to. I've done that so many fucking times. And doing that so many times and that repetition of showing up when I, when I thought that I was going to have a panic attack. And I did have panic attacks on the show and it's all documented. You could watch me walk off multiple shows because of it. Led me to a point where that will hopefully never happen to me again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all, the, the growth is in those moments of struggle and desperation. And, and that's why I really have a hard time connecting with people that haven't been through it. And I tweeted about this before, a pretty harsh take, which is that like I don't really fuck with people that haven't been through some shit in their life, bro. It's just really hard for me to fucking to, to connect with them. That's why I mean really? this do get along. That's why I mean you get along. Yeah. I feel that way about people who don't work out too, which is weird. I love that. <laughs> I'm just being honest, man. It's you like, feel like yeah. you're chasing it. Like we're talking about success, but you do that with working out too. Like you'll, Every day you're waking up, like if I lift just a little bit more weight, maybe I'll be happy. Yeah, I, I will say lately I've been, I have, dude, it's been like a week and I've actually had really terrible workouts. I've been really hard on myself the last week, like mentally really down on myself. But yeah, for the most part, I mean, I've kind of slowed down a bit because my, my focus has shifted towards like other things that are becoming increasingly more important in my life. Um, but yeah, a big part of me is like, if I don't, I know for a fact, if I if I don't get a good workout, I don't know if I maybe have like four days max if I don't have a good workout, like I, my, my mental state yeah. drastically Same. declines. Yeah. Same with me, I, I, it's more mental for me. I've looked back at pictures of myself or like videos, even at Coachella, like damn, I was in great shape then, you know? And it's such a, a minor little difference that you pick up in your head, but yeah, it's just being happy and just that consistency, that progress every day, just knowing you put in the work, that's where I'm happy. Like today I, I spent, a a lot of time on myself. I went for a five mile run in the morning and then I did cryotherapy. I went to the gym after. I had a good productive day, so I'll feel good today for the rest of the day, but tomorrow I'm waking up and it's, you're starting from scratch. You gotta do it again. Yeah. Well, that's what this shit's all about, right? Mm -hmm. It's a consistency over hurt time. Hurt my tongue. Hurt your you tongue. Know? Doing you what? Sneezed. Sneezed, bro. Sneezed. You, you, don't, you never know in life. Nothing's promised. Like you said, the only thing that's guaranteed is this moment right here. We it's could get fucking hit by a, by a crane. You could. Yeah. You did. Or you could sneeze, bite your tongue off. You can't do podcasts ever again. <laughs> or you no saw punk. that. You saw that. It's kind of downtrot. All right, guys. Quick interruption. One of our sponsors, Raycon. Um, these are actually nice as fuck. I mean, I'm not even fronting right now. Actually shocked at how nice they are. I've been listening to a lot of uh, music, obviously, because I'm in the gym like 24-7. I think you're crazy if you do not train with music. That's just my personal opinion. There are some psychopaths who like are just super zen and they can do it without music. But check out Raycon. They're fucking dope. The, the battery life is dope. The, the packaging is dope. The quality of the music is great. Honestly, it's just like straight up like all the other fancy ones they're just like they even fit really well in my ears too can't hear shit but they're a better price so if you guys want to check them out go to buyraycon.com uh, today if you want 15 percent off your order again that's buyraycon.com slash raw talk okay buyraycon.com slash raw talk to get 15 percent off your order sleek sounds great honestly a legit product and it's not a crazy price so check it out and uh yeah let's get back to this podcast Wait, yeah. can we talk about... Let's talk about Steve will do again. Uh, yeah, YouTube. that's what why, I was going to say. Bro, what a page. fucking tragedy, bro. How the fuck does that why happen, Why did that happen? Uh, um, well, I'll give as much information as I th think I can give. Because um, I, I did. I wanted to get him on the pod. I was going to go to Miami and do a pod with him. And I'm trying to get one with Aiden because his bitch ass flaked on me when I was here. Um, <laughs> when he was here. Uh, yeah. You could tell him that. Too, I was just the on the phone with him before. Also, Gideon flaked on me, too. Just I'll put that out there. Just Damn. These people know. need to understand the power of this podcast, bro. Yeah, this is a great know. podcast. It's we fine. talk about a lot of it's great fine. stuff. They're, they're too popular. You know, it's whatever. Um, so anyways, the point is like, uh, where was I going with this? Yeah, Steve, Steve uh, he's obviously made a lot of really, really, really like helpful. Like he's given so much to so many people. Um, there's just some things, and I know some of his recent videos that just like... I, 
something specific that wasn't supposed to be there. Yep. And it, you know, it, YouTube is simple as like if someone's reporting videos and it goes through a system and they find it like that's not supposed to be there. You break these policies. You know, you do it enough. We say get fucked basically. And I'm sh I'm shocked that like I, I what I understand is I think he's trying to appeal the process and it could take some time to come back. And I think he's looking at other avenues to continue to create content on other platforms. Can he if, just do a, another channel? No, or, I think he's no, toast. He, he literally cannot. Banned. He cannot make a channel. Can he appear? What about can he second, appear in Nelk content channel? still? Did they, did, yes. So what I what I understand is that he can appear in other people's content. Got it. Because on Twitch, uh, if you get banned on Twitch, you can't shut your face cannot show up on Twitch. Really? Otherwise, that person will get a strike. So when you get banned Holy on Twitch, fuck. you are banned. That's so nuts. I don't know if that's how it works on YouTube, but no. I know they shut down his second channel as well. His every, every video he's ever posted is off the internet. It's because he can't even make an account. So he he and I, I from what I understand, he's appealing something right now. Um, and dude, I mean. I hope it works. I, I think it would. I don't know why. Like, because like I said, he's he has done so much good for so many. Like, yeah, yes. he's changed a lot of people's lives. You know, obviously he's made a lot of money. The shit that he does, et cetera. And he, but he gives away like, like he doesn't need to give away millions of dollars. Like, the, the, he just does it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it, it was his dream to be a YouTuber. He made it in such a hard, sought after profession. He made yeah. it, and then it fucking. Sucks. It's also yeah, a big shot for that. For it's also a big shot for that camp. Like, but to never to well, we got to talk about that in a sec. But to never be able to make a YouTube video, like, like to not be able to make an account, right? Like, there has to be some sort of like time, like hey, you know, six month cool out period, three month, like a year. But like to never be able to make an account again is like that's fucking crazy. That concept blows my mind. The and most. you don't know why? He, well, I, I he knows why. I know why. I, also, I know why. I, I just don't want to. I don't want to say it without. You know, if he was sitting here and we had him here, he'd say it if you wanted to say it. I just don't want to say that specifically exactly why. It's nothing crazy. Like, he was crushing it. Fuck the subscriber count. Like, he was he was crushing it on weekly views. And and what I was saying before is like he was like the weekly drum beat for that camp. Because yeah. like because like Nelk with those like more like high end, like professionally done videos, like with the crazy concepts, they may put out a video like once every few weeks or like even like a month. They yeah. might miss a month. And and obviously they've been doing a good job with the podcast, but like Steve was like that like weekly YouTube drum beat that just was always on. Yeah, Happy Dad, like whatever else, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's just it's just a, it sucks, bro. It really sucks. And Steve is just like the sweetest fucking kid. Dude. Are you guys celebrating that. over at Impulsive right now? No, absolutely not. We don't celebrate, I'm bro. Kidding. Listen, I'm kidding. no, no, no. But it's a good point. It's like, dude, like one thing I always talk about is. As a society, we just stop tearing each other's buildings down, bro. Yeah, I don't view it like that on, on YouTube. I I look at it like we all need to be on this platform and be working hard at it, crushing it. Because if we're not, if we all just disappear from YouTube, nobody's gonna go on YouTube. If Mike's the only one posting on YouTube. It's gonna be harder for him to be successful on YouTube. I for sure, everybody needs to be on it because now everybody's spending all their time on TikTok or whatever, and it hurts. I feel like everybody's views got crushed, and that's just. The reach of all of us on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah, that fucking hurts the whole community. TikTok, I feel like, is like I'm not celebrating like they are over there at Impulsive. Because <laughs> yeah, aren't, aren't they doing like 15 minute videos now on TikTok? That's yeah, but thing. the problem with the TikTok is just like, and I've talked to a couple like the Chinese these, like, government decides what they want you you've to watch. You've been talking to the Chinese government? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, okay. What's his name? President well, Z. Uh, back is to is that how you say it? on YouTube? You got to click the videos. This is what I want to watch. I'm going to watch this for the next 15 yeah. minutes. This is what I'm doing with my next 15 minutes. I would click Steve's videos. I click Mike's videos. You know, I don't choose to watch a lot of the shit I watch on TikTok. Yeah. I don't want to watch 15 minute videos randomly. I think TikTok works because you're only getting 10 seconds. I see what you're saying. Videos. I agree with you on that. Well, you could sure. just stay on the for, on the following tab and never leave. Oh, that's a good point. But 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 the thing about it is like dude, TikTok feels like there's a million channels out there. There's there's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's Twitter, there's all these places that people create content. But if you if you really want to fucking go for it, if you really want to become a, a, a person of the space YouTube. that has longevity, yeah. you got to make it on YouTube. Facts. That's it. Twitch is Twitch is closing in slowly, slowly. But they also have some like pretty wild rules over there and laws yeah. and stuff like that, right? If you want to make it, and you want to make money, and you want to do it big, you got to make it on YouTube. Yeah, I agree. And and that that crossover is so hard on people. Like you see these people get 20, 30 million views on their TikTok videos and then 
six point seven thousand views on their on their yeah. YouTube videos. It doesn't convert. Like they try who to. You, they, who are you talking about specifically? There's not a single person. There's not a single one of these people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Yo. <laughs> okay. Not he's bad. doing dance. He's interpretive dancing. There's not a, a single TikTok. person that I I actually am thinking of, but like. The idea of trying to convert that YouTube is a very special fucking beast. I talk to people about this all the time. They're like, what is your, you know, what's the revenue look like on YouTube versus, versus TikTok? And I, first I tell them like, dude, my revenue is not from AdSense. I make really good AdSense revenue, but the majority of my money is from sponsors. I'm a little bit yeah. different and I'm a, I'm a, sp I'm a whore for sponsors. Yeah, dude. I'm yeah. the biggest sponsor whore yeah. in the world. I'm trying to set the record to be honest with yeah. you, but the revenue this like disparity or like the difference between the revenue on TikTok and YouTube is insane. Now the videos are of course longer, but if you make a 60 if you make a 60 second video on TikTok and you get a million views on it, that might be 40 bucks. Yeah. Thir that might be 30 bucks. Yeah. You might be potentially be able to go and grab just dinner for just you at the Outback. Yeah, you need other just sources you, there. Right? Yeah. But yo, you do a million once you get Establish you have an audience, you do a million views consistently on YouTube, 7,500 bucks, 10,000 yeah. bucks if you're in preferred. Real fucking money. How do I get in preferred? I try not to talk about it very often. It was a, it's been a, it's been a bit of a situation. Do you guys get back there? Uh, I'm on preferred. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. Um, yeah. The yeah. real money maker, the real long term ad sense is in movies. You know, the, and those make, you realize, what did Top Gun just make? A billion dollars. A billion, billion plus, dollars. Over a billion dollars. What? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, made a, and Tom Cruise had a, had a, pro, a uh, profit sharing. Oh, he crushed it. I think he, I think he may have made uh, 150, 20 million. <gasps> Holy fuck. Yeah. God, that's yeah. Scientology. That's the movie. Yeah, Tom, huh? Tom's, a, Tom's insane. But yeah, you're Whoa. right. But dude, you're talking about the biggest actors in the world and that's still a club. Yeah, what the hell? We can't get into that club. I would Jesus. love to. I would How love do I to. Get oh, that's, that's like a TikToker trying to transition into being a vlogger. <laughs> yeah, like trying to transition is. into being Tom It kind of is. You're right. You're kind of right. And not just any actor. You got to be the biggest fucking guy doing billion dollar movies making 150 mil off of it. It's a small crew over on YouTube right now. Yeah, it is. Of, it's it, very it, it really is. It's super small and super tight. Like, and uh, super old too. And yeah, we're getting old. But, but honestly, like I, I will say this. There's like, there's like these like... I, I love I love the YouTube culture and I love YouTube changed my life, dude. I fucking love it and it gets me excited and I, I get passionate to talk about it. There's like these like concept creators, Beast. Shout out to Arak who's I fucking been doing a, him. dude who's been doing a great fucking job with Arak. Yeah, just dude, like two days he, ago, bro. Like, I'm doing a transformation. I'll be completely with him. honest with you. We didn't. We, me and Logan didn't didn't. I didn't. I'll speak for myself. I didn't see it at first. I knew he was charismatic because we were sitting with this kid. We yeah. were sitting with him at the Maverick house and he was there like, yo, I, I, I spent my last X amount of dollars to like do this or do that. Yeah. And here I am at the house, like, let me, and honestly, like we overlooked him. I'm not going to lie, bro. Yeah. And that kid is fucking talented, bro. He is. He is extremely talented, extremely charismatic. He's a hard worker and he's got great concepts. Very smart. I'm going to do a video with him tonight, like one in the morning. And I haven't it, seen him. I haven't seen him in a while. And I, 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 you know, I always, I always ask myself, I hope that he's. He's still super humble. He was a really humble kid. He was a nice, nice kid. Fuck, I, I, ho I hope that stays like that. But you have these like concept creators. Then you have, you know, your, you, you have your uh, streamers on YouTube. But then you have this very small aging prehistoric circle <laughs> of vloggers, bro. Wow. And it is, bro, it is getting so small. Like, dude, you, I look back at the greats, bro. It's the just fucking, you and Jason Nash now, I feel like. No, there's. there's, why did you, there, there's I lot. love Jason Nash, but no, why did so you make I, it yeah. seem like a senior <laughs> citizen? <tone? laughs> I'm, just, I'm just fucking around. No, the day the day that really hurt me, bro, that really upset me was when we had was when Emma stopped, bro, because Emma was like one of the last. Emma Chamberlain was like one of the yeah. last, like, like handheld, like self, like shot vloggers. At, you know, kind of like uh, Casey Neistat esque. You know, yeah. not no comparison between the two, but they were very sim like similar in their in their shooting style and in and in their sharing of everything. Yeah, just rogue and, warriors, yeah. solo creators. Yeah, they just exactly. do it all themselves. Even you have a sidekick. I I need 
help. I don't even no, don't for know. No, for sure. For sure. And that's, and that's what I'm getting at. Like, like you, you had kind of like the V1 vloggers. You had Casey, you had uh, Emma Chamberlain, Roman Atwood even. Yeah. Roman had to stop for various reasons. We just had him on Impulsive and his episode's going to come out soon. And he had, to, he had to stop because he had he had stalker, a really dangerous did, stalker. Did you go to... Uh, no, nah, he came to meet us in Nashville. Oh, okay, and cool. we did it in Nashville. It was awesome, dude. Roman's a, just a legend in the space. But like all these guys have like slowly but surely, like eventually you move on and you, and you start to create other things. But he had a stalker? A really dangerous stalker that was like getting into his OnStar while he was driving his car and like fucking with his door locks and his car, like turning his car off and turning his alarms off in his house he had every balance of every bank account he had access to every Holy social fuck yeah that's like insane. the real deal and the feds ended up getting him it took a long time that guy's crazy talented yeah. how the fuck did he do that yeah he was an inside job maybe it was somebody <laughs> close to him <laughs> i mean bro that's insane i don't think it was but but well, he talks about it a lot in this podcast they find the guy out. yeah they got okay. him yeah, yeah, yeah. It's i just hit, i hit him up to do a pod too hey roman's incredible yeah. bro he's a special talent you're, you're gonna have to check that out on impulsive to get the rest of this yeah for sure no it's fine i don't care i i'd love to support your guys' show the show's amazing thank yeah, you it's a great dude. show yeah. we love doing it bro it's it's my it's my favorite it's my favorite thing the, it's even more than the night shift and more yeah. than anything else it's i like what you were saying earlier about how you would have panic attacks going into stuff but you figured it out you put yourself in those uncomfortable situations and look at you now you're a professional you get it done i have moments where i'm like fuck i can't do a show right now what the hell did i ever agree to doing this for but that's the thing you just get better at dealing with stuff throughout life we had that we had that i'm happen. working through a tongue injury right now no it's i was fine. gonna pull out <laughs> you're you know? so funny stop i was gonna you're back so out funny. but i, I was love your like love what would jake paul do here you know he oh you can't, he can't back out you can't no, pull out he no he not. didn't pull out well, was was it, okay, so let's talk he? about that really no. quick. So yeah. was it just because he didn't, because I, I saw some I shit. I know what I know. I know what I know, but I never know if what I know is like, from what I understand, Hasim couldn't make weight. That I thought was, it was, that's I thought the it was, story. I hear it's ticket sales. No, but I don't know anything about that. What I know is that Hasim couldn't make weight. He was supposed to get down to what, to 200 pounds. That was what they were fighting at. And... I, it was like maybe so okay so i actually got the news that he had backed out while sitting next to pam at SummerSlam, and logan's just about to walk out and fucking jump off the top rope onto this ass onto the <laughs> yeah. I, we, we create these yeah. like real beefs but mike mike is incredible the miz is incredible but we we literally argue with each other from the stands with the wrestlers so we create these, dude like, that sounds beefs. so fun man. it's bro it's the oh, guys like, damn the impulsive team we're getting so like so many topics yeah. but, sorry guys no, no no i will say this there is nothing more fun than than the WWE God situation, damn, dude. Bro, bro, I want to do that so bad. It is insane watching him do this stuff, bro. It, we we sit there in awe of. I mean, listen, Logan Paul is an incredibly talented athlete beyond what most people would consider to be an incredibly talented athlete for people that aren't professional athletes. Like this kid is a, is a, the real deal and has been since he was a kid. We've seen it with every split, every backflip, every jump off, every single thing he's ever done. But now to see him bring it and to create this storyline and this character and to be working with the, one of the biggest you know organizations in the world, like there's no fans like the WWE, maybe yeah. soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. But there's just not any, the WWE's fan base is ferocious. Yeah, it's bro. a cult. It's a real ass a cult. cult. It's and amazing. they're and they're kind of now because of what he did at SummerSlam, they have no choice but to start embracing him. They have this chant that basically goes, when when something happens, if you can get the audience and the stadium to chant, holy shit, holy shit, that means something of epic proportions has happened. And when he did that jump off the top rope through the table through Miz. At SummerSlam, the entire stadium was chanting "Holy oh, shit!" Sick. and it was a really awesome moment because he's Logan has spent a lot of his time, uh, and, and at certain points for good reason, as the bad guy. And it, 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 he doesn't. Jake embraces the bad guy. He loves being the bad guy. He wants to be Conor McGregor. He wants everybody to fucking hate him yeah. and everybody to have to go through him. And and he doesn't. He gets fuel from that. The more negative comments, the more he gets fueled, and he wants to. He wants to be that. Logan is very much more just like, he's kind of like his mom in a lot of ways, dude. He's a lover. He wants people to love him and he wants to love people. Yeah. And so he, you know, I don't think he ever really wanted to be the bad guy. And so now to see the audience and like the people in WWE embracing him, yeah. he's just super pumped about it. And we love watching it, bro. Yeah. It so was amazing, awesome. man. I it feel like amazing. they're already letting him do whatever the fuck he wants. Like bringing the impulsive TV, so like a podcasting in the WWE ring. When I was a kid watching WWE, 
I would. I mean, podcast didn't even exist then. Right. But now they have it, their podcast set up That's in the dope fucking as fuck. ring. He walks out with his prime. It's dope. It's, man. He's I idiot. try to be. I try to be careful, like, because people will always like. I don't know where this term like dick rider or like whatever came from, but if you're not applauding your friends when they win, you're a fucking piece of shit. That's we should all be fucking doing that and getting excited and smiling and, and fucking rooting for our homies, bro, to yeah, win. Yeah, that's a fact. And, and this kid, bro, and I call him a kid and everybody gives me shit, but I'm 37, so to me he's kind of a kid, is just special. He's such a special person and a special creator and a special businessman with Prime and athlete with the WWE. Yeah, It's like he's actually the real deal. And I remember when I first joined him, he would always talk about being the world's biggest entertainer. He wanted to be bigger than The Rock. He wanted to be bigger than all these people. And I didn't, to be completely honest with you, like I, I, I didn't know if I was like 100% on board with like always believing that. Yeah. But I really <laughs> see that path Oh, now, I thought you were bro. saying like, like you weren't on board to go along with it. That sounds like a lot of work, Logan. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot of yeah, work, bro. So, so what, I was always curious about this because I saw stuff about The Rock. Like, because The Rock like kind of sunned him when like all that stuff this is happened. sensitive, yeah. Oh, I can't I know, you could, you could bring it up. Yeah, I just, yeah. I mean, like did, uh, does, is he never going to do anything with him again? Because of that They're kind of fix like all that shit. Because it was like, you know, obviously you were there. They were making content, and then that happened. It was like, yo, you could look at my back because I'm not really gonna look at you in the front. It's just the sad. The, the thing about it, the only thing I'll say about it is like, when you have an idol, when you have a person that you look up to so much, and and for even for the best reasons in the world, like they they decide that they don't fuck with you temporarily or whatever. Yeah. That's. There's really nothing more painful than that. Yeah. It's painful, bro. Like if 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 Arnold Schwartz and if you did something that got you like in trouble momentarily and Arnold Schwartz was like, I don't fuck with that guy, that yeah. would that would kill you, bro. Yeah, it'd be fucked up. That'd so I think it was up. just a painful like moment. You know what I'm saying? I think I would just fucking beat him up though. <laughs> Good He's luck. old now, you know. He is so I think I can get him, huh? What do you think? I mean Jeff? the rock's old too. I think you could fuck the rock up too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll fuck the rock up. Yeah, for sure. That's just my attitude from being from Staten Island. I think I'll <laughs> just Staten anybody. Island thing. Yeah. You think I'll fuck the rock up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you believe that you can, oh, I, I know that you. I can. Yeah, yeah I believe for you. sure. And the rock's like fifty years old. Those bones got to be clicking. You know, he's got to. He and he's a natty, so it's movies. like you know. He's natural. Is he at his? No, you <laughs> asshole. I was like, wait, what? Is that? No, what he, it, but he claims that, though. Right? Yeah, that it is just, the thing. It's all pancakes. That is it. Yeah, it's pancakes and in In and Out burgers and cheat meals. I don't know. That I, I I do think that's an interesting take. I don't I don't know. I mean, I get it. Maybe it's because he's like just works Moana out super and hard. shit. You know, <laughs> he no, just it's works like works out super hard. No, it just I don't know. It is what it is. I just think that's an interesting take but i guess you can't i don't know in hollywood you know liberal you can't say that you, you can't do that. just be like yeah i'm on juice I'm, I'm taking the best steroids money could buy but even people that aren't in hollywood they a lot of people did not want to deny that shit yeah there's a lot of people we've had people on the show I'm not gonna say anybody specifically but like i would assume that George a lot Janko? of these people are are on, no guests i would assume some of these people are on roids even though they say they're not bro yeah george called me out the box D is this a real story yeah it was, it's on Instagram stories right now. George Janko did. Yeah, George had a had a knockout in Puerto Rico. He fought one of Jake's team members. Uh, Jake's and fucking he talked in and the kid went to town on him like this. And George just fucking <laughs> dropped him one punch. Headgear? Yeah. yeah. There was oh, headgear. nice, nice. Yeah. yeah dropped he got him. a knockout with headgear on. Yeah. Oh, and George solid. took that as, you know what? I'm calling Jeff's out the guy. Jeff Wittick. That's yeah. who I want to go Because he's after. been hanging out with you too much and he's uh -huh. not liking that. Yeah, yeah I, I that guess, that, that I guess there could be a backstory yeah. to it like that. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be something. So would you fight Jeff? I Would you fight George? Yeah, I'll do it in a fucking 7-Eleven parking lot. Fuck the contract. Let's just do it there. Me and Dude, George that's what I want to see on the night shift. I tweeted that the other day. I was like, I just want to see KSI and Jake just fucking fight, like bare knuckle somewhere. G going back to Jake's situation, I know it sucks with the Madison Square Garden and the weight and everything. I, I see him pulling out uh, or whatever, whatever the fuck happened. But I like how he handled the KSI thing. That was dope. He's like, I'll come there for free. I'll, yeah. That shit, that shit was gangster. I like yeah, it. I did. I do. I did really want to see that. But the, what the reason why is because like, they can make so much more money if they just spend more time on it. I think people just view Jake as an actual fighter now. He's just. The, you know, such he's a real athlete. He trains every Who wins single that day. Fight? No, well, the, well, the reason why that fight's not happening. Jake. No, yeah. well, well, hold on. The reason why that fight's not happening is is simply put because KSI has admitted that he's not ready for that fight, right. and that's a very fair statement yeah. to make. Yeah. Like you want to, dude. Jake has been training nonstop 
for probably four years. Yeah. This kid, every single day he gets up, I, like I talk about Logan, and Logan's a creative, and he is very disciplined. But Jake is on it. Jake is in a different lane. Dude. Well, listen, this so, kid is. This kid is. This kid is. So this it, is oh. YouTube boxing, right? Yes. Back when Logan put on that track and field event, right? If you wanted to compete in it, you had to have a certain amount of subscribers. You had to be an actual entertainer. You can't be like an athlete entertainer because I'm sure if LeBron James started a fucking YouTube channel, he would get millions of subscribers. But you have to be an actual YouTuber that requires most of your time going into that. Jake does not do YouTube anymore, basically, right? Or actually, yeah. who the fuck knows? No, he doesn't. Does he? He, I mean, he makes a video here and there. To, to I consider Jake an actual athlete now. Yep, yep. So who do you put him up against? Not Well, real fighters don't want to fight him. because then It seems like fighting him, was his way out of YouTube. Yeah. For both of them. I mean, it was Logan's initial way out as well. It was kind of like he, he claims you know, that KSI saved his career. I, yeah. He said that multiple times, and that fighting saved his career. And I think it's done the same for Jake. I mean, Jake is making a ton of money because he's self-promoting. He started the MVP, right? Is that yeah. correct? Well, yeah, no, MV, yeah. The promotions Most value promotions. Oh, my God. Dude, I'm having a brain fart. So he's running the business side and the and the fighting side. Yeah. And so he, he made a ton of money in, in 2021. And it also has just been a great way for him to focus. And, and I mean, dude, like, like I was saying, the kid just dials in. He dials in. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of people that say a lot of shit about it. And I've been one of those people. I've been one of the people that's been outspoken against uh, about Jake in the past and take a real fighter, take a little uh, this or that. But, bro, you, you, he, first of all, now I feel like he started to fight people that you could. He, there's no way you could look at his catalog currently. The past, you know, two people, whatever, that he's knocked out who are world class athletes at one point in their life. Maybe they weren't boxers, but but um but to knock out uh Tyron, Tyron was a world class athlete. Combat sports. A combat athlete. sports athlete with champion. a with a propensity to strike hard. Knockout power combat sports athlete. And and so to to say that Jake Paul is not a fighter or a real boxer, I think is 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 stupid. That's not you no. can't you can't yeah. have that take. And to go one level up on that, even his his training regimen and his discipline, which is which is something that we talked about a little bit earlier in the show, is is second to none, dude. The kid is the kid dials in. He stays down there in Puerto Rico. He doesn't do press. He doesn't do shows. He doesn't do YouTube. He doesn't make TikToks. He trains. Yeah, year round. He wakes up every day. Trains, trains, trains. Whether he's got a fight coming up or not. Because he really does want it. He's 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 dead fucking serious, bro. What he wants to be one of the what, one of the best fighters. He does. Saying? He want I mean it's hit I, you can take this however you want. I'm saying his words. He wants to be the, the champion of his weight class in, in the real sport of boxing. And Damn. you can people can take that however they want, but that's what he wants to do. Damn. I think Deontay Wilder started boxing at like 25 or something like that, but in his case, he's a freak of nature athlete. You know, he's six seven. You know Deontay Wilder, yeah, right? of course, yeah, knockout artist. Just had that power. You know, technically he wasn't as good as Tyson, but back to the thing though. You know, like when I got into Logan's race, this was a YouTuber <laughs> track and field event. You know, yes, so I yes. was like, dope. I'll fucking smoke in a YouTuber. But then they started bringing in. Oh, this guy's a D one football player. Destroying. This guy's a D one yeah. track star that they put because they. I joined. I signed up for the mile because I could run about a five twenty mile. Trey and I was Han like, was that's that, that's he? impressive. Trey Han was a D one track fucking star. You know, so you want to bring him in, but he also has a million subscribers. And now, since then, he's fucking crushed it. He's like one of the biggest. YouTubers. Oh my god, Trey Han! But that's really? what made it interesting. Oh. You know, these people spend all their time creating YouTube videos. They do YouTube all the time. So how much time could they actually be? Train in this sport, and then so they show up and smoke you. Yeah, yeah. So this fucking kid ran well, five hundred seven. He smoked Ryan Garcia. Then yeah. Ryan Garcia's in it too. This yeah, guy's yeah, a yeah, fucking. I'm like, bro. I thought I was going up against Emma Chamberlain. Yeah, in this yeah well, they could have done. They could have done. I mean, bro, you say that, but they could have dumped Charlotte Jordan, and she probably would have smoked everybody. I yeah, that bro, girl was yeah. a monster. On yeah, the track. it's actually crazy. Yeah. Like that, that was, was a fun event. It was dope to watch. Logan, I enjoyed it. Logan pulled his hamstring <laughs> immediately. He didn't even make it out of the fucking step and just pulled his shit 
And Barrel, his leg turned purple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you uh, that was a, a YouTuber day. weightlifting competition. Yeah. Put that on. Let's That'd do that. Sick. And I feel like not many people. It's like that's too specific. You want to do another Challenger Games? That yeah. was that was a yeah. dude. As you much fun. It, right? I commentated it and had yeah. as much fun as that was for everybody. That was that was a flop. This shit show. <laughs> it was a flop. Yeah. I mean, bro, there's gonna be flops, and it was funny because that was like that was one of the things we were like trying to do to like be like like to like combat like KSI and like the sidemen shit who just have always crushed it historically. <laughs> yeah. And we come back with this challenger games where like Logan pulls his hamstring and turn, leg turns purple. <laughs> yeah. There's like six people in the crowd. Oh my God. It Let's, was a ton of fun. Yeah. Though. I had a, I had a lot of fun, man. I had so much fucking fun. Let's change the subject a little bit. Um, <sighs> Kids. I'm yeah. Kidding. Well, that's what I was going to talk about. Like relationships and not in the sense of our relationships, but do you guys think that it's harder um, to date in 2022 because of social media? Yeah, a hundred percent. Harder for men or for women? Both. Both. Because again, everything is, uh, well, I don't know if it's like, you just always want what you don't have and you're always looking at, oh shit, this is out there. What the fuck? It's no more true life. I'm my true soulmate. I could be wrong though. Maybe we all need to have kids and that will be the thing that finally hits the switch all right now this is what my life is all about and there's no going back because you can't break up with your kid i guess you could leave your kid and be a piece of shit dad but i don't have that i would never, well, I would never leave my kid you can yeah, still take care of your kid you could leave the girl and be a piece of shit which yeah, happens yeah. In like 80 percent of the time at yeah. this point that's why i've been kind of just rolling the dice lately Wait, just, Brad, just didn't you yeah say, just not didn't you bro. say didn't you say you were i'm gonna going leave? for it the kids so they could be resilient like you because you you know what I'm saying like you thought of that wasn't that no, a thing no I would never do <laughs> she that she jumped in at such a funny time I, <laughs> yeah me and you had a moment I go dude I'm oh, rolling the dice oh my god because I gave <laughs> we really had a moment I was gonna bro. say I was gonna say something about something but no um, no, no but no because bro like Dude, I do want to have a kid. Bro. Me too. I really do. Me and too. like I, I feel like I'm in a good I feel like I'm in a good spot. Like I feel like you're never like in a perfect spot for it, but like I got a little padding. I got a house now. Why don't you start by getting a dog in the house over there? You know? <laughs> oh, dude, we couldn't keep the plan alive. That was a bad <sighs> that was a bad stepping a stone plan? for me. Ooh, yeah, shit. because I travel a lot. I gotta wait a little while longer until until things settle down a little bit. I'm thinking about freezing my sperm. Yeah. Because, bro, my ne my nut's getting old, bro. I got old nut now. It's yeah. like old peanut butter nut, dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I've just been thinking about just blasting randomly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like, see dude, what just happens. Roll see, the dice. See if it sticks, dude. Bro, roll the dice. Like, pick like pick one. Like, dude, this one's this one's got strong genes, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, one yeah. could probably could be a pole vaulter, dude. or a, or like a mathematician, yeah. or a, or a, cre a social media creator. Yeah. And but but dude, like. Back to the relationship stuff. Forget the kids for a second. Kind of. Yeah. On the relationship stuff, and to Jeff's point, a lot of people look at like being like famous and how that pertains to like things in life as like, oh, they've got fame. And so because of that fame, they have more money. And so they can get more girls. Or they can or they have a nice car or a nice house. And so they get more girls. But honestly, the craziest thing about like celebrity or pseudo celebrity or influencer for relationships is something called access. And access is a very strange thing because if you bring a girl to New York City and you're rich, but you're a nobody, you might not get into I the best you club yeah. or you might not get into the best. The hotels sold out. Right. But when people with a, with money and influence call that hotel back somehow there's a room that just cleared up somehow yeah. there's a table that just cleared up and and even more so for the average rich person or the average person in general who's in a relationship they go on their phone when they're taking a shit right after when they're when their wife is going to bed and they're you know they're they're about to maybe they're not shitting at night i don't know or they're sitting on the couch I and they're at night. right but they're scrolling they're through instagram down Scrolling through Instagram. You pee sitting down? I'm just saying maybe they're maybe the guy he's thinking of is peeing sitting down. It just seems like that came from a place of Yeah, like a, like you understand. I'll be honest with you, I do occasionally. When occasionally. I, if I middle really, of the night, if I go to the bathroom and it's pitch black and I'm tired, like I'm half asleep, I'll sit down and piss. I have I have. Just because I yeah. 
I'm if, not gonna admit that. I'll admit that. If you like wake up in the middle of, so yeah. you're gonna go back to sleep. Yeah. You don't wanna waste that much energy. I'm half asleep. What if I fall over? What if I pee a large stream I and I get shot saying. back into the wall? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like an age thing. So you're this guy. <laughs> so you're this guy, and you're sitting on the couch and you're scrolling your phone. Yeah. And you come by. I don't know. We're changing the bathroom to the couch now. Yeah. You're on. Okay. Fuck it. You're on the couch. We're you're on scrolling the couch. your phone. You're on Instagram. You come by. Brit Manuela, for example. Okay. What name is that? Whoa, bro. Yo, I just threw a random name Dude, out. The way what, have you guys had a problem with that no, on the show The way before? you smile about shit. The look you made the look. after you said the last Can name. Can you pull that up? Why, have you guys had like an issue on the show before? No. Brit, what? <clears throat> Man, who Because I got this about? kid, Judd. Oh. Oh, I found her. She's no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Okay. Wow. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yo, Judd. Judd's going to love this clip. I love Judd. Dude. Judd's the best. Judd is my favorite person. Shout out, Judd. You, Judd you're, fucked up, you're though. A Do you know? Do no, you, I, from what I understand, there was missing context. No, I'm not even I, talking about that. I'm talking about do you know? No, because we okay, we I don't. We'll talk about it after. Okay. Uh, let me let me switch to a different girl. You sip, you're sitting on the couch. You're scrolling your phone. And, you know, influencer A or B pops up. Perfect. And you're the average guy, and you're sitting in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, <laughs> right? Yep. And you're, even if you're loaded, you see that girl, and you think to yourself, wow, she's beautiful. And you might run in the bathroom and spank it. Okay. Okay? Here's where things get fucked up. We're in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. Yep. I scroll past. I see that girl. I'm sitting on the couch. I say to myself, I think I'm a... Talk to this chick. Yeah. And it's easy as one, two, three. Yeah. I'm in the inbox. 98% hit rate on DMs right now. Data. <laughs> it's just the oh, average shit. empirical the average. evidence. Holy fuck. I don't dude. miss. That guy's killer. And so I know this and I'm sitting there in a relationship now. It takes a very specific level of discipline to not do. And by the way, like when I was with Lana, for example, that was my last relationship. I never did that shit. She actually, I'll be, I'll be a little bit transparent right now, a little, and I'll be a little overexposed. She texted me the other day, and she said, "I gave you a lot of shit in our relationship because I'm a very outgoing person, and I talk to a lot of people. But you, you never, yep, but yep, she said I am, yeah. and I gave you a lot of shit because of how I felt about that. But you never cheated on me. You never spit it, tried to holler at other girls we were dating." And I appreciate that. And I want to tell you that now after the relationship, I can, I can tell you that comfortably. It, it, I'm paraphrasing. I could read you the text, but it's basically that. Yeah. Because I would never do that in a relationship. But for a lot of guys, when you get to this level, it's, it's hard, bro, to just, to just, like you really got to discipline yourself around who you follow on Instagram. You got to discipline yourself about your social media usage because if you're going to be not me, don't point, don't t point at me. Well, you're the one that brought it up. You said with Instagram, you got all these girls popping up and shit. It's for other people. It doesn't affect me. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, when's the last time you were in a relationship? I'm pretty responsible. I never cheated. Um, my last relationship was public, and nothing bad about me said there. I was a great boyfriend. That's fair. Yeah. I just think it's interesting for, I guess not so much from our perspective of like as a creator, it's almost like from, I'm talking about from all their perspective, if they're not a creator, if they're not like doing this, right? Cause I will let most of the people listening aren't probably social media celebrities, well, I'm assuming. Not. Right. right yeah. So they're, they're like in this game now where someone like us or someone who's like a football player, bass, whatever. Right. Can like, if they're, if they're getting like a fucking, like a 10, like a dime, someone else could slide in the DMS real fast. Cause it's not hard to find, you know what I'm saying? Like, but also, I feel like when you're on that level, you have so much more to lose. You, you're such, you're a public figure. You can't fuck around. Liberty doesn't always equate to y'all. I'm gonna be on my best behavior because I have right. this status. Right. It just doesn't. It what does for us? Yeah. But some people just don't give a fuck straight up. Bro. Yeah. And that's a crazy thing. That's just a crazy thing. I just think it's changed dating so much. Obviously, not just the grass is always greener stuff, but. You know, even the rich guy, yeah, maybe he not, might not get into like the restaurant, but like the rich guy could slide in that girl's DM and be like, I'm going to pay for your trip. And like, I'm not going to out my boy Sylvie over here, but which, what girl did you get sugar daddy away from? What was, what was her name? Yeah, he's not going to say it. So, but the point is like, it's, it's a real thing that like people with money or celebrities can like, they're not hard to find these girls that are like other guys you know normal quote unquote we'll call it guys are trying to date it just changes the dynamics so much the competition is so like fucking crazy yeah
that it's just like just different now. I was just thinking from my own personal experience, I would be scared to send a DM to a random person. Just I'd be worried if they're going to screenshot it and post and say, look at this asshole. What do you think? What the fuck do you think? I do it all the time. I send DMs all. I don't give because because you are very respectful and you you say also you'll always wait for them to reach out to you and then you respond for the most part. I would say I would say. 80, 70 or 80% of the stuff that I personally do. And I, and I, sorry, I want to keep this on the, on the audience and the general awareness, but sometimes I feel like they are interested in what we do. For sure. It's fun. For sure. But I would say 75% of the stuff I do is fielding DMs. So I'll get a DM, I'll accept it, and then I'll <laughs> respond to it. But I shoot, I shoot on girls that don't even live in this what country. Do you shoot, what do you shoot with? Like, what's your Sto- go-to? story replies? Got it. Story, story replies. replies. If you're just, if you're just clicking message, you're, you're losing. Yeah. Story. Re- I think sto- this goes for anyone listening, by Bro, the way. Uh, no, yeah. a thousand yeah, yeah. percent. I've said this since day one to, on every show. If you're just raw messaging with a with a pickup line, you're you're fucking up. Yeah. Because, it, t- like, for for people that don't understand, girls are always looking for relate a relatable moment and a connection through some sort of like psychological connection. Right? They also like attention. A- a- right, for sure. And yeah. but what but what gives them attention? You paying attention to them. Right. And so if they post a story of them at Chick-fil-A, you automatically have a Chick-fil-A response built in. Like, yo, what's, yeah. your, what's your go-to sauce? Blah, yeah. blah, blah. Whatever the fuck. And I, also too, I wouldn't say that specifically, but like what I, there's, an, <laughs> there's an opportunity there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, and also he's, he's very right. Like he'd be like, oh, Chick-fil-A's fire. You could say yeah, anything. Yeah, he's right, but he's also verified with millions of followers. <laughs> yeah. He okay. goes to the yeah. top of the yeah. fucking Hold on, hold on, hold on. But, but, but that's, it's all relative. It's yeah. all relative. So, so if I'm verified and I go to the top of the inbox and I have millions of followers, me shooting a raw message without a story reply is the same level, just proportionate to them not having a blue check mark. Do you understand? So I so, understand, but, so, so, but he just said for the people listening, you can also do this. So Timmy in Spokane, Washington, or what's the place that nice. You, yeah, I'm yeah, that was good. You're doing what I do in Tuscaloosa. You <laughs> Tuscaloosa. should stick with Spokane. Now. Yeah, okay, That's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, you're you're telling them try this. You know, if Timmy in fucking Tuscaloosa says, "What's your go-to sauce at Chick Fil A?" There's a chance she'll never own. Okay, that. and but but okay, fine. And Timmy's crushed. Well, hold on, no. I'm gonna, and he'll never. I'm gonna leave tell you guys Tuscaloosa. some real shit right go, here. Go. Here's the crazy thing about the DMs. If you think about this. Just because I look, I look at everything on this actual platform. If you look at a message to someone, or like if I'm looking at a message to me that's a reply to my story versus a message directly to me, if I go in my DMs and I read it, it says so and so reply to your story, and then you could start to see some words. You get a little bit less of what you would if you just shot a DM, and likely the person's interest, like their own interest in like knowing what someone yeah, replied to. What did he say to, about my story? Exactly. Oh wait, wait, wait. Is he had a thought interest. on my, mm-hmm. on what I posted? He has a critique mm-hmm. for my content, yeah. and you see less of what someone's saying. You just see like has replied to your story, and then like a, like two words. 100%. So you're gonna be like, what the fuck is the rest? So, of this? so perfect. So Boom. so so two so two reasons. One. You've you've made them think to themselves, yo, he has something to say about what I post, and I want feedback. Do you want feedback on your stuff? Of course, because it can it can it can teach you in school you what to post next. So girls are and are just like guys. We're all the same. We want to yeah. know what people think about our, our stuff that we're posting, right? But number two, you're creating a relatable moment, dude. I'm telling Boom. you, that's number one, bro. Yes. Because other because okay, if you fire off in a raw message, you're picking from a million different topics you you might be able to glean a little bit from their page maybe they like mountain biking maybe they like skiing maybe yeah. you could come up with something but if you see their story it gives you an exact topic that you know that of they interest. are currently relatably yeah. interested in yeah and you can then input yourself into that moment this is and huge cre- bro think about how great that is bro yeah. she currently today is shopping for cat food and is in the store, and and for whatever reason, I, this is a horrible example. Because I'm not hitting her up. Uh, fuck. Straight up. I'm just fuck. saying. Yeah. She, she, she's shopping for dog I'm food. I'm sorry. On that specific day, she's petting her black lab. Okay, Next awesome. to her pool and, awesome. say, and types in, I love you so much, Johnny. 
Mm-hmm. Bro, you got shit to work with now. You yeah. got clay to build a little fucking sculpture to give to her, exactly. bro. You know what I'm saying? As so, opposed to just some raw shot. Do you you just not like hit on girls or slide in DMs? Like, what's your thing? I, all right, guys. So our next partner is Athletic Greens, a product that I use all the time. And to be honest, like I've used Greens products for shit the last like I want to say ten years. So these are definitely products that I really, really believe in. I really stand behind. Um, this one's super nice packaging, and I think right now. Athletic Greens is making it super, super easy. Um, and they're giving you one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D, which you guys should know is super, super important as far as like overall health, well being, sleep, muscle building, everything. Free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash enjoy. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash enjoy to take ownership of your health, pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance this stuff's amazing again i I would tell you guys straight up like if you do not take a greens product every day i guarantee you're probably not eating enough greens so something like this is really going to benefit you so give it a shot again that's athleticgreens.com slash enjoy and uh, let's get back to the podcast I don't DM often. I don't shoot. You're an in person guy only? I have a couple times. I've said some fucking crazy shit. I need something that's going to make me laugh to DM them. Dark like, shit? Or no? Well, yeah. I mean, not necessarily dark. Like one time I said to a girl, hey, congratulations. That's what I opened with. And then she responded like, <laughs> so, LOL, for what? Like like dark is like, hey, you, you think if I punched you in the face, it would hurt? No, no, no I don't go to violence. Okay, I don't know, bro. dude. No, no. I mean, like a little light love punch or a little love slap, you know, like a, like a, like no, a well, the there. thing is with us. <laughs> Like spit who, in the mouth, you know? Our situation, Gotta we've done cookies you've been eating. Bro. We've done thousands of hours of podcasting. So if a girl thousands. that we reach out to, they can do a quick Google search and learn everything about us. We probably repeat the same shit in every podcast anyway. <laughs> yeah. So they're gonna find out everything. I know exactly who this guy is. But for guys, a guy could get a message from a girl that has a private Instagram and then you're fucking trying to zoom in on that little picture <laughs> and you could a guy a guy could, yeah. a guy could oh, fall in Jesus. love. You could fall in love with that fucking Jesus. private profile. But you flip it and it's like you could fall in love with that little pixelated Dude, head. Why? Yo, this That's girl, my soulmate. This is my dream girl, bro. What's why wrong is with this us? so real? Four in 480p, bro. Fuck. Just sitting there like a fucking Tetris block. Dude, that was good. That was good comedy. What the fuck is wrong with us? I don't know, man. Bro, but it's the worst part of all of it. The worst part of all of it, like all of it being digitally grown and bro, verified and millions of followers and DMs is now, and this I feel like is something that Tate would say. You put us it back into the field, you know, where lines are supposed to be haunting, and we are <laughs> emasculated. Yeah. We are fucking vaginas, bro. I, dude, I'm at the gym at Equinox. Uh, shout out Equinox fucking uh, Encino. I've been going to Equinox Encino, and they're about to pop this new one Bradley open. Owns studio, gym. I'm Studios. opening up a gym right down the street from that. Yo, so shout out Zoo Culture. Zoo Culture is incredible. Zoo Culture Encino, Zoo, by the way. Okay. I'm yeah, gonna be like in Studio City. So, no, no, no. Then let me shout say out that. Old Spice. Okay, okay. It's the best palm. Yo, <laughs> have some respect, bro. Zoo Culture. Fucking they made me Cino, fucking dog. sign up. I just mean like <laughs> I don't made... need for workout. Yeah, if I wanted to make real progress bodily, I would go to fucking Zoo Culture. I'm not there to go on my phone. Bro. Gave yeah. my daddy Steve a free membership. Yeah. Jeff. No, Jeff. We talked about this. Go to the front yeah. counter. Go to the front and sign the thing. That's all I said. No, he I, said you. Say, I heard you say go swipe your credit. You card. weren't there, motherfucker. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Get the Yo, but fuck listen. Out of here. I go to fucking this gym, bro. And, bro, Equinox is always just stacked. I'm sorry, Zoo Culture. Zoo Culture stacked too, but the girls there can like lift me up and shit, yeah, which is strange yeah, a different. little bit. But like, but like when I go to, they can like really pick me up and like maybe body slam. Would you like that? Me. But yeah, I don't know. I, I have like. This, have you ever know. have you ever been with like a more muscular chick, like a more athletic workout chick? Nah, I'm, I'm, Brad. What do you think about this chick right here? Look, yeah, I screenshot it on the way here. Look, this is very Jeff that? FM of you. You like um, that? I don't know if what I do. So we're looking you, at. Can, can I see send, zoom in can on I that? Send that to you. You can we'll send just, that. No, we'll send just send it, the, pop the it up. image. Um, I, I saw that on my explore page. It's probably because I follow you. I'm getting a lot of those. I don't know bodybuilder chicks. Oh, you did screenshot that. Um, it's uh, it's I, interesting. I, I mean, she has a good transformation. I That's prepped a, for this. This is a really good transformation for this pod? Yeah, to yeah. To fuck with me? Yeah. Would I hit? Is that the question? What we're looking at is like a jacked 70-year-old granny. Super and jacked. But she had a transformation. She was thicker at one point. Yeah. You think those muscles are real? 
Absolutely. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, huh? she looks great. Killing it. Is I she on might, steroids? I don't think so. I don't know though. I'm y'all young. are y'all done? Who yeah, are sorry, y'all I would fucking have, done? Sorry, bro. So how would she even get steroids? Imagine you're a steroid dealer and this seven year old grandma comes to you like She'd be like, It's for my son. I want what you fucking know? test. What what's I gotta ask one more time. Are y'all done? Like, oh, sorry, are you go really ahead. fucking talking about my grandmother? You, you know what Mike does? He says things and nobody asks him to repeat it. And then he says it again. He doubles down like an, an Andrew Tate voice. Dude, he's got the Andrew Tate vibes going on. He's good. I fucking respect it. No, I think it's the like, hair. I think it's the new hair. Like, it's the hair. He's got I the don't f- shoot. I feel. <clears throat> no, no, listen. I don't shoot. I feel. Like, bro. <laughs> yeah, oh, nobody oh, else God, God, ask my speaking to style now. <laughs> oh, now oh, okay. No, no. You know what? Mike's a great podcaster, and I'm just breaking his balls. I, I give him shit, and sometimes I go too far. I apologize. No, I, Sorry, no I'm Mike. kidding. It's Sorry. funny. Wait, I love... I, w- Continue. Hold on. Sorry. I'm getting carried you away. You want to talk more about the grandmother? No, we're going to leave, leave Let's go back to David. No. Let's, fuck David. <laughs> okay. Fuck David. Okay. Fuck David. I want to talk about how come I wasn't invited to the H3 podcast because I got some shit to say to that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm no. here for this conversation. Yo, yo. Uh, actually, I, I reached out. I was like, because mm. he kept going back and forth. He started up this. Uh, like how that, yeah. BFFs thing. Like who's my bestie. And. I don't know. I just Who's thought it was your you're giving for a, him. No, you're giving a, ter- a terrible. I know, bro. I need to take a nap. No, understanding of it. We, we, me, me, Tana, and and Jeff have had historical beefs with H3 for a long time, ma- major ones, in all different fields of of shit, right? And I think you know he's grown and we've grown, and over the years he's seen things in us that he thinks like, wow, why am I beefing with these guys? Like they they say a lot of shit that's funny or that I like or that I align with or we're fighting against we're fighting on the same team, but somehow we're not aligned, right? And so Jeff had started to build a bridge between the two entities, and then he he I I mentioned on Jeff's show one time that like dude like i still don't understand like why me and this guy have beef because like it, it, it it's it's all garbage it's bullshit it's just you know fugazi bullshit he hears that and he's like okay like it seems like mike is now trying to reach out an olive branch so we're gonna start doing this poll to see who my best friend it was a joke so uh, it, it okay. continues on it continues on <clears throat> tana somehow gets you know brought into the mix as well and he asks us to, uh, and him and Jeff have this conversation, he asks us to come on the show. And earlier on, on, on this episode, I was talking about anxieties and stressors and putting yourself in uncomfortable positions. I mean, dude, like we didn't know what the fuck we were walking into. Okay, Mike's a little bit wrong there. Um, I set it up. I told him, I was like, me, Mike, and oh, Tana want to come on the show before he had even agreed oh. to it. So I kind of set really? it up. Yeah. Okay. And we've been doing our podcast, Jeff FM, Tana and Mike have been recurring guests. Right. And I didn't know Tana's beef with him. I didn't know what it was about, the whole Twinkies. Twinkie thing. Yeah, Twinkies. Uh, I knew your situation. I knew you had beef with him a little bit. I was an H3 fan before I got into it uh, with him. And then afterwards, he had stuck up for me. And even though we had beef in the past, he still you know, stuck up for me. So that meant a lot to me. And I wanted to mend that relationship, squash that beef. It felt good. When I left there, I felt, I felt real good. It's good. It was a real, I mean, dude, it worked out great for me. <laughs> Mike crushed it. His on. alpha brain kicked in. Damn. He was on he fire. Was on. He was talking politics <laughs> with him. And he does a political show, too. So yeah, I know. they were really into that, and their audience was really into that. But yeah, great crew over there. Great audience. He's got a, a great, great time. dude, honestly, it's, it, it sucked because he, you know, like I had friends who had real consequences because of. And maybe, maybe rightfully so. I don't fucking know, dude. Like, I even had real consequences for stuff that, you know, wasn't true. There was, there was like, you know, he had perpet- or perpetuated the story that I, w- that I had done this crypto scam when it, in reality it was just complete bullshit and I'd never made a single fucking dollar off of it. And I lost a financial sponsor as a result of the video that yeah, he made. And so I lost, you know, like thirty, forty thousand dollars from a from a financial sponsor. And so, like, there was real palpable reasoning for us to have this dislike for each other and, and also for other creators. But, you know, we got on the show, we sat down, we talked to him. He's a likable guy. He fucking, he, it had to be done. Yeah. It had to be yeah. done. You and know, and other people saw it now, like Hassan Piker saw it and he's like, oh, these dudes like seem cool. And now that relationship is kind of like kicking off because Hassan is like, for people that don't know Hassan, this dude's, I would say is probably the most efficient debater and like just like long form he explainer of things, dude. Yeah, I didn't see that. He did a great clips. job. Look with it tape, up, bro. It's entertaining. Yeah. I, did, I saw clips of it. I didn't see the whole thing. Yeah, Hassan's Hassan's great. They're, they're good at what they do. It's 
obviously a different style of content than we make. Right. But um, yeah, they're killing it. And yeah. I don't want to have beef south. I don't mean I don't mind. I'll have beefs for life. I'll take it to the grave with certain people. But <laughs> you know, that's not one that I wanted to have. And a lot of it was just a misunderstanding. So we needed to just get in there and chat. And yeah, it felt good. Yeah. Um, how would you approach it? Would you <clears throat> go in there? Just trying to body slam everybody in, in the whole place or body slam everybody? Yeah. No, honestly, I what mean, is your issue with He him? just had, he, he, I kept my gym open during COVID and he just ridiculed okay. me for it, basically. Yeah. And, and related, like, the, my biggest issue, the thing I just would love to talk to him about is he tried to relate, like, the gym and the importance of the gym. And I was speaking through, like, a mental health standpoint as, like, it's basically like laser tag. And I'll just never forget that moment where he said that in a video and he related the gym being, like, well, I really like laser tag, so like I should be able to laser tag. It's the same thing that this guy's complaining about. And I just think, obviously, from him, it, he doesn't understand how actually important it is for someone's mental health mm -hmm. like it was for me. So I just remember hearing that and being like, this guy is a piece of shit. I think that's, that, that's I, where I could. That's, that's an interesting. I uh, yeah, that's a good argument. See, yeah. I, I like that better than the body slamming technique. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to try to say I just oh, love to ask him about that. You don't that. have to, buddy. He'll, he'll see it. Trust me. He has an army bigger, than, be, more ferocious yeah. than any army on the internet that will take that clip and it will get to him and by the way it's a good it's a it's a discussionary point and i i said to ethan very specifically on that show a lesson that my friend logan paul taught me it is very dangerous to speak in extreme absolutes in life and then and to say to someone what you are doing is 100 percent uh unequivocally wrong it's just really hard to do that because you can you could never predict the angle for which someone does something. You don't know what they're going through. Like, yo, what if every person in that gym without workout was a detriment to it would be a detriment to their mental health to not be there? And I think that's what you're you're that's saying. That's exactly what I was saying. Right? Yeah. And 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 so, you know, like I think although in his eyes he may have been right that a, a, a pandemic that was at, it also was a different time, Bradley, of COVID. It was a different time. I think even near the end of COVID, we all were just like, dude, this is fucked. This is like, dude, being in LA with yeah. this motherfucker, the whole rest of the world has, has moved out of this phase and we're still wearing our masks outside. Like, yes, I think it's everybody insane. fell off at a different point. But I think <clears throat> for you, the problematic situation was that it was very early COVID. And, and that was a time when a lot of people were very scared. And so I'm not, I'm not saying either side was right and you guys can hash that out and have that conversation. I simply do this on podcasts where I present the opposing viewpoint when they're not in the room. And so what I would, what I would assume was that Ethan was in a different phase of his respect and fear of the virus at that time. And so he was looking at it as an irresponsible uh, a tactic to do that. And, I'm, and once again, you guys talk about it. But, yeah, I, but yeah. like, I'm just trying to present I get it. I think his... it's more so related to probably the other things that I was involved in at the time, which would have been like making content with the Nelk boys. And he was, he was kind of active on, you know, not us doing other fuck shit that he was probably relating to this whole situation. Yeah, Bradley, and... let me ask you a question. Go ahead. If the gym was for mental health what was the 10,000 person protest for that you knew was just going to piss off those people for content, right? Well, there's the one, th there's the one thing that you're, I'm going to be like, and yeah, you're like, you're right. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Where, got, that's, it, got it. Got it. <laughs> but the gym itself, which is an operating business right. still existed in a space where people came there like in the fucking troves because of how important the gym itself is to them. Right? That was a completely unique 100%. experience, like outside of, the actual gym itself. So I do, I, I understand if he's going to say, oh, well, he's just doing this, he don't give a fuck, right? Then he can just relate it to that and say, oh, he doesn't really care. But like, I definitely come from a sp specific standpoint in my life where without the gym in my life, I would not be here. Same. And there's kids same. and there's people who I've talked to specifically in that gym who told me the same exact thing even during that time, thanking me, thank you for this, thank you for this, thank you. Not just fucking three people, like, a hundred, two hundred people have said that to me during that whole time that like, if it wasn't for this, I don't know where the fuck I'd be. Okay, yep. right now I'm, I'm just the middleman here. Go I'm ahead. sold on what you're saying. Yep. But are there videos out there of you fucking raging in this protest? No, and yes. Those will be pulled up now. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, you are going to walk tease. yourself. No, 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 but he's in, admitting to it. That's he fine, yeah. He's, he's admitting to it. He's, a, he's not going to try to fight that. Oh, yeah, which is true. good. And, and, and Ethan has become... Ethan, the good thing about him and the reason why the show with us happened is because he's becoming more empathetic to the, to the opposing viewpoint. And, and, and we all need to. 
We all fucking need to, bro. Like, like the I'm closed off. This person is a piece of shit, which is what still exists in the political hemisphere and still exists in, in, a, in a societal place at a high level in this country. I don't like your viewpoint, so you're a fucking piece of shit, and I hope you die. Yeah. That is that is you still think, exists. Do you think? <laughs> but but Ethan but Ethan is has moved out of that, and yeah. now he wants to know, yo, why were you doing that shit? Yeah. Do you think if I came with like. Uh, gloves on in my mask. I'd be, I'd be better off having that conversation. No, he with would him. never, bro. He would just walk away. He would just—he's oh, okay. not gonna. I'm fucking around. He I'm just, fucking around. No, nah, he would just. I was trying to be an asshole. No, that's it's. That's all. I would like to see him fight Keemstar. <clears throat> to be honest with you, they need to. They've had or the they just beat need forever. to stop. Or they just need to stop. They've had this beat for how many years? Like it's been crazy. Yeah, I didn't know too much about them. Bro, they hate, hate each other. Hate each other. That's like the biggest beef they've. It's the longest standing it's beef the I've ever seen. It's the commentary community beef. Yeah, it, that's what it is. It's crazy. You didn't know about that? I didn't. I wasn't big. Bro, on that. I, every time I turn around, I see a different tweet where he's like, "Fuck this guy." It's like, no, no. It's, now I see it because I've been involved. I've been watching, catching up on it. I see it, but um, it's it's insane. So now the new thing is monkeypox, and that's <laughs> scaring me because I'm going back into gyms and I'm touching stuff. And I thought about this. If uh, fuck, I mean, you could freak yourself out thinking yeah. about everything that you touch because that's a nasty one. Yeah, because it doesn't it like it's you, from touching things, or I I think you have to kind of yeah. Aren't they saying it's prolonged uh, kind of exposure and touching? Like it's I like, mean, who the fuck knows now? You know, right? It, it, everyone says everything, but apparently it's through like seems like it's a sexual intercourse thing. Crowder was calling it a gay disease. Well, I don't think that's true. Obviously, that's but. what he said. <laughs> and very, very, I mean, like, this is the shit I'm he talking said about. It's, it's a like, gay disease. When are we going to start calling monkeypox a gay disease? That's what he said. Really? Yeah, it's on Twitter. <clears throat> and by wow. the way, I responded to it because, dude, once again, absolutes are great to inflame your audience. That yeah. people love absolutes. Yeah. Joe Biden's a piece of shit. Donald Trump's a piece of shit. People can rally. Women can't that. drive. Women people, women can't that. drive. People can rally <laughs> yeah. behind that shit. No one wants to hear. Well, ninety-two percent of cases are currently exhibiting the. Fu-. No one wants to hear that shit. Yeah. People want to fucking get mad and they at someone, someone, and they want to yeah. fucking burn shit down, and they want to get pissed off, bro. And that's and that's why you see the people winning that are winning. But yeah, Crowder said it was a gay disease, and I and I responded to the tweet, and I said, was every single case of monkeypox because of a gay a gay person. Yes or no? And and people just come in the comments like of course not. I'm trying to get myself out of the frame. <laughs> Yo, you're funny. <laughs> I don't want to be clipped. No, out. I mean I mean Speaking, it's like it, you got to just have to be careful when you speak like that, bro. Like yeah. you have to. And by and by the way, I I don't know what it is or is it. But I yeah. but I but what I can say is I truthfully don't know what it is or isn't. Yeah. People have to be comfortable stating, yo, yeah, I, don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. And to be honest, like, I'll treat it like anything else. I'll take the precautions I can. I'll fucking wash my hands. And that's that's it, man. But I can't, yeah. like, I can't worry about are it. Because like, if you get it, then everybody's going to know you're gay. Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you going to stop? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. I was going to ask you, are you going to stop fucking doing Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. You know? I was like, we should keep that going, dude. Let's just fucking roll the dice. No, it's... <laughs> You guys are so dumb. Yo, I hate this because we're heating up and like I don't want to be here for six hours. <laughs> yeah. But the, the energy and like the conversation Dude, is just continuing to fuck. exponentially go up. Dude, yeah, I was going to ask you. I like, was really Dude. hoping that you'd finish the last thought when you guys were talking about dating and then you went into like some other shit. Which last thought? I... Th- because you guys jumped in because you the granny screenshot of her getting yeah I had it I had it I that's had gonna it. get a lot of like laughs when we, if we put that up on the screen let me airdrop that to you <laughs> yeah airdrop fuck it. dude I remember it's exa- Bradley's iPhone by I know there was okay. a I know exactly where I was going and I, and now I, I I can't remember where it was it had to do with dating yeah and yeah it did because you were talking about like social media dating and then you guys were in uh, DMs but then you switched off and we're talking about relationships and commitment. Why don't we dick ride Ethan Klein a little more? Let's no. go back to that. Because no. this is going to be clipped out. Mike's going to be voted up. Number one fucking stud. Whatever the fuck the voting Wait, poll. No, I'm, there's I'm no voting hate, doesn't no. happen on this show. That doesn't happen. Yeah, they just doesn't. say Bradley and that this is always a great show. When these people, Your audience is actually so, always like really chill. Yeah, they're cool as fuck. They're really chill, yeah, bro. They're cool. It's That's why I like coming on here too, dude. because it's just like you know, and we always have just fun ass conversations. I love bro. this shit, man. I know you don't need another therapy session. Nothing deep that you need to talk to Brad about. 
Honestly, I this is the thing. I you figured. Know you guys. Yeah, I, yeah, we, I, I need a therapist. We, I, mean, dude, I need an actual so, therapist. Just so you know, me a, a, besides the George episode, any other episode that me and uh, Bradley have done together, we both have cried on. Uh, yeah. Both. Yeah. Not just yeah. one or the other. Both. I'm trying not to do that. And so, like, it looks like we're not going to do that today. I think dude, we've been yeah, watching let's do so it. Let's cry. Tea. No, let's cry. honestly, I think, I think, like, I think, like, you guys both have great shows, but we should just make this the show. This is a I this, love this should be a podcast. Show, guys, dude. look, we were talking about it earlier. We we're saying, look, like you guys are all in your thirties. Like, do a podcast called Over the Hill or something. Or you middle know, aged men. Do that. I love that. Dude, yeah, that'd be I love so that. dope. Dinosaurs, whatever. It I'll is, do you know? I would do a podcast with you guys. I would. If I you had topics would. and shit, I would do it. I I would love that. Let's say hey guys, vote, vote. What do you think? Do you if guys shit do, gets, put it in the comments? If this shit gets, I don't give a fuck. If this gets 17 Jeff's likes. Jeff's going to have six podcasts in a second. He's going to be just, every day he's going to wake up, the alarm's going to go off, time to pod, and Bro, just podcast. Bro, I've never even wanted to be a podcaster, but I love it this is shit. fun. It's the best it is shit fun. ever. I love That's this why shit. every time I'm vlogging, I'm like, dude, shit, I could just be podcasting. No, but here, see, this is, hear me out, hear me out. Your format with us three will go Ooh, crazy. Because yeah. your format is is so sustainable, it's insane. It's amazing. Like your format's incredible. Like because we're the trying world, to, we're the trying world to... makes our content. You know, yes. there's only so many of these deep talks we could get before we start repeating ourselves. No, I don't think so. I think we find something new every All time. All right, let's do it show. every day for a year. Yeah, well, we'll, <laughs> and we'll see. <laughs> you guys have enough life experience opposing to like other people, so like you guys have a lot of common factors. No, yeah. If we I, get into listen, stories, mm. that'd be fun. Store. I mean, it, it, we would have but to have like another too. person come on and like go and also talk about you know events and shit like that. But your format is the format for this for sure thank you i'm really actually inspired like your by your format format too this is cool sometimes i'm jealous of this that you're you guys are able to make this work i need all these gadgets and fucking technology you have gadgets you have a team of people in the bathroom that's what i'm saying what i need saying. all the gadgets oh, oh got it got it take Sorry. another alpha brain bro Fuck. yeah he's slipping he's slipping right now yeah, yeah. I, he's like he on fire for two hours. Oh, no 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 because i started thinking of all the stuff that i have to do tonight and it starts stressing me out yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, do. Have edit. I, have I have a video coming out episode. tomorrow i gotta get thumbnail ready with judd i gotta fucking well, we could we could we could end it dude we can come back you know it's fine i have to go write jokes for my it's fine. not to mention not to mention i had a actually really Ex like date I was kind of excited about, but now I have to, I'm gonna have to cancel it. You had a real. It goes date? back to the conversation we had because wow. I have to because I have a video that has to come out tomorrow. It's not ready. You so have, have a real date. Wait, wait. Prioritize yeah. things. Okay, so this. Yeah, with, is a, with, a, with an actual like this one's like a real deal. Like this, this one, like I actually could see myself t like talking. Okay, to. but this is oh, the thing. Wow. Now, now you have to prioritize things. Like, at what point do you prioritize your personal life and like when you develop like a family and whatever it is and prioritizing your job? Because that, realistically, like, are you really le like living if you're just focused on work, 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 you work? You know when? Where you never. Next time. Yeah. Yeah. Next time. Next I got, time. I got, I, got, I got an audience. I got a. I got sponsors. I got mortgage payments. <laughs> so when will I prioritize my next personal time. life? Next time. And by I the way, it. when next time comes, next time. <laughs> the so next time good. after that. It's Eventually, good. just take I baby love it. steps. Though. Dude, you inspire me. Dude, Aww. I am inspired by all you motherfuckers. For real. No, I mean, I say it jokingly and sarcastic, but I do mean that. I appreciate Both of you guys that, are bro. awesome for real. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Thanks and, for uh, having us back on, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you guys so inspire we're not doing me audience too. Questions? Um, audience no, questions. No, we Fire are them off. Did Fire you them get? Off. Yeah, of course we have three to do of them. them. I feel terrible when we ask for the questions and they give them and we don't get to them. We do that on my show. Yeah, we all have time, to. We so have to ask the questions. Yes, let me get them right now. Okay, so we got audience questions at the end of every episode. If you guys want to send your questions in, send them to, is it askrawtalk at gmail.com? I got an Correct. audience question for you right here. How much can you bench, Bradley? Not Be enough, honest. Not How much God. can you bench? <laughs> like all That's time ever or currently? That's uh, the most common question people ask me. Of course, bro. But that's it's like what, I've answered what, this. I've talked about this. It's well, old news. Just what are you benching now? How much currently? You benching? Currently. Eh, max. Probably like 450 Good right now. Oh, God. It's not much, though. Bro. Make it end. It's not much anymore. It's not a lot. Oh, his kid is unbelievable. Is that's not a lot, Wait, bro. That's what, what did a you lot. Four fifty. That's not a lot. Yeah, you need to do more. Yeah, yeah. way more, dude. That's like my life. That's like Francis Ngannou with me on his back. That used to be a warm up, and you're just pushing it. At yeah, yeah, but it's Francis Ngannou came up to Jeff at UFC. Cause we were there. Oh, the one that I didn't. Yo, let's talk about that. Well, hold on a second. I don't start a new fucking topic. Okay, sorry. Well, you <laughs> did we were, that, not but me. We were we were back. We were at, like at the end. I don't want to say backstage and sound like an idiot, but we were in this like entrance area, and Nagano came up to him and 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 can I say this? 
I don't know what you're gonna say. Jeff, I Jeff asked him like, or uh, Jeff said like, "Yo, your hair looks good." Oh, because he got the surgery. And, he got uh, the procedure. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, and he was like, and he was like, yeah. He's like, look, Francis is my boy. Yeah. You know? What do you say? What do you say? We're good friends. No, I mean, I met him a few times, but <laughs> he did come over to me and first name basis. You know, it's cool. The fucking heavyweight champion of the world. He's Absolutely. A, a specimen. And I tried to get him to bond with Mike a little bit. So I thought they could relate on this one specific thing. They both had this hair procedure done, you know? Yeah. Where'd you get yours? Where'd you get yours? And I kind of, I guess they both took it as I'm throwing them both under the bus. Like, you fucking baldies. Oh, fuck. You both got this fucking surgery. But I didn't mean it like that. I was trying to get you guys to be friends over this. And then Mike was like, oh, I paid $2,000. And then Francis was like, oh, I paid nothing. I paid nothing. His French accent. And he said, I did not pay anything. No, I didn't say I paid $2,000. I just didn't say anything about the cost. And I, we said that we got the procedure and he said, but I did not pay for mine. And yeah. then went like this and then went like this, ha ha, and walked away. And I go, <laughs> I go, yo, should I tell him that they paid me $15,000 to get it done? <laughs> So he had an, uh, like an uh, oh a pro, my god! Yeah, like, Yo, should I go tell him that his like little jab was not really that strong? Because why don't we just jump him at that point? You it. know, both of us will pull what we're gonna pull on you when we got here. We were, uh, planning an attack. We didn't know that we we're gonna hit it off so well again. Yeah, and we just Mike distracts him. I come up behind him, but he's How a come big you didn't? guy. Why do you keep trying to fight all these UFC fighters? Especially the big ones. Yes, yeah, it scares me. What do we got for audience questions? Yeah, I don't. I was kidding. I don't want to fight Francis and Ghana. Okay, so <laughs> what this person said is, what is the most attractive um, thing about a girl besides physical? Oh, when they're funny. That's oh, that's really, that's intimidating when a girl's funny. Why is it intimidating? It can be sometimes. <sighs> Wait, why, why is that intimidating? Because that's supposed to be me. I'm the funny one. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Share it. Hmm. I like I like creative girls and girls that have uh, especially a solid take on music. Wait, time out. What do you mean by creative? Elaborate. Girls that have a solid take like on something of the on shit. something of the arts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, I mean that the shit, notebook. bro. There's a yeah. certain passion. I think passion is directly aligned with uh, intellectual intellectuality and intelligence. And so, like, if a girl says to me, like, "What type of music do you listen to?" I don't explain what genres I listen to. I pull up my 16 Spotify playlists that I've spent hundreds of hours of time curating for no reason. Oh, you gotta send those For no me. one, for, uh, dude, they're fantastic. For no reason, I'm not being paid because I'm that passionate about my music. And I'm that passionate about cheeseburgers. And I'm that passionate about certain things. So if a girl shows me that she's passionate. Well, that's my answer. About something that she gets uh, It's me all of our answer. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, is, it's a girl that like gives a fuck about what she's doing. About something. That's what I care about. About something, bro. 100%. If I ask something a girl, that yo, is not just, even if it, I mean, I guess it could be fashion. The way they dress is, is cool. Any, passionate about anything, but just not like just looks. Yeah, you know? no, that's nothing. And I think that's what the question was, right? Yeah, it was. And by the way, like I like a girl that's like even to tack on that just a little bit more. That's a little bit weird. If I ask you what type of music you listen to, and your and your answer is like top forties type shit, that's like a little bit less to me versus like if a girl comes to me and she's like, "Yo, I've been listening to the Doors a lot lately," or yeah, Pink or Floyd, like old, or like or like oldie mm -hmm. shit, yeah. or like or like some two oh, thousands hip hop. Like I've been listening to. Uh, <laughs> like, that's what I meant too. When I said they were Richard funny, they could be like weird, yeah, 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 like weird funny. <laughs> But like a stand-up comedian funny would be intimidating. You Wait, know, yo, Whitney Cummings. Whitney Cummings, dude. I, I gotta say this. I, I want to share this publicly. I saw her uh, a, a video of her on Twitter the other day. Whitney Cummings is hot, bro. I'm sorry, dude. She's really funny. And and you I seen your shot right here? Kind of, yes, dope. dude. That's dope. And I know someone told me to like be careful with her because she'll like flame you if you just like suck at your approach. But I don't know. I'm just this is more of a compliment. Like I saw a video of her on Twitter and she's like. She's obviously one of the funniest female comedians, one of the funniest comedians on the planet in general, but she's also really hot, dude. I'm just throwing that's, that out there. That's the one, see, What's that's the next the problem. question? I would get flamed. <laughs> I would be the one to get fucking flamed. By but her. so what? Everything I said was very nice. You want to flame yeah, yeah. me for being a nice guy and complimenting no, no. her work? I think you just mean you You couldn't, like if you DM'd, because like, you just don't DM girls, you said. You, that'd be the one that would came up, come out on you and fucking screenshot and send it around <laughs> yeah, to the internet. Yeah, look be like, this look at this fucking ass. loser. I would be in her next special. No, she wouldn't find you, you for what you said. No that's way. what I'm saying. No if way. what you say is respectful and and and, and complimentary, then how do you she get flamed? Actually, she wrote a lot of the roast jokes that were fucking... She's oh, for who? She's for who? She's nuts, I think she bro. did Josh Richards, and he was up there, say, he was up there for like 20 minutes. Like 15 minutes longer than everybody went up there. And yeah, Whitney wrote some fucking heat. 
Damn. Say she's, some she's of the smart. wildest shit. She's smart. Her new yeah. specials, or the special that she was promoting is hilarious, bro. Hilarious. Yeah, check it out. Well, let's get to the next question. Go so ahead. someone put, what is some advice you would give a person that is going through dark times right now? Oh, man. Um, Hit well, the sh- gym. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's... Yeah, if you're not already, right? Like, I think that's one of the easiest ways to, like, try to get your mind right or your mind on to something else. Um, I mean, this is definitely, like, one of the most commonly asked things, I, I would say. Uh, I would say, besides hitting the gym, because that's, like, you probably already doing it if you listen to this show, um, get someone to talk to. That's, I think, equally yeah. one of the most important things. Just having someone to, like, you could just you know field fucking questions talk to without so much of a asking like hey what do you think about this like almost just sharing your thought and again if you don't have someone if you can't if you can get a therapist but it's just it's really just like getting your thoughts out of your mind so they're not just like bouncing around back and mm-hmm. forth in there i think yeah. that's the most important thing. I, I i feel like i just said hit the gym because that's your audience it's a great no it's a great answer a lot of people can't answer. hit great the great gym answer. if you're injured or you're sick or something you can read you find something to do <laughs> Or uh, something I like to do is take people under my wing and help them because it's one of the steps. I didn't do the 12 step program, but I feel like you have that in you too as a recovering addict. I guess you're always recovering, right? Yep. Um, you always got to kind of pay it forward. You got to take somebody under your wing and it's a constant reminder of where you were and where you're at now. So I think, yeah, if you could help somebody out. That helps you. It helps yeah. help you out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is my most for me like constant question. Right, you know what I'm saying this is that's the world that I live in, and um, your, yours was a great answer. Patty Pimblett kind of, you know, if well, if it, he just won his last match and came out and said, "Yo, there's a stigma in this in this world right now that men can't talk about their problems," and he yeah. he, he said some really meaningful fucking shit, and we're gonna have Patty on the show, um, and that was amazing, and it's really unfortunate that the stigma around men's mental illness and all mental illness and drug addiction still exists. And I just want to say to anybody out there who, who the people who ask this question of what to do during a dark time and, and are thinking about talking to somebody about it. If you've never told someone that deep, dark secret that is sitting on your chest uh, and you're afraid of the shame that you may feel for sharing that secret, I promise you that there is no shame that is heavier Fuck, dude. The the feeling you will get by removing that weight from your chest, there is no shame that can outweigh that. Right. Like that that shame is minute compared to the freedom that you will feel by getting that off your chest. There's just nothing greater than walking out of a therapist's office or a friend's bedroom or a parent's room having told them something that has been sitting on your fucking chest that you had never told anyone that you held so close to your heart because you were so scared that someone would, would not react the way that you wanted them to and you, and you were scared of the stigma and the shame and all of those feelings. It never happens like that. People, people, no matter how cold this world gets, if you find someone that loves you or someone in your life or someone that you can talk to, I promise you they will be receptive to what you have to say to them. It is in our nature deep down that when someone else is hurting that we will be there for that fucking person. Maybe not all of us, but most of us. Yeah. And so I would just say if you're, if you're really battling something and you're holding a secret, that will always be heavier than letting it out and, and, and taking that light chance that there might be a little bit of shame or stigma attached to it. So fucking talk to somebody and tell yeah. somebody how you feel. That's right. Take it from us, three grown men that make a living off complaining on the internet. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But he's true, though. That's true. Oh, That's of course. I, I agree. That's 100% I, I, true. I've cried have on to, the though. internet. I cried. I put the whole fucking documentary out, and I was so scared to do that. And that was one of the biggest moments for you, I think. Best decision of my life. Yeah. I that, don't think I could like survive today if I didn't talk about what was going on that wasn't even my answer either that was just picking up on yours but my but my my answer to it also just on top of that is a, is a bit of a weird one and i like i because i have a million answers for this i've coped with every uh, you know addiction tantric and sex it's not that today okay sorry. but if you can figure that out what that's is great. that what it's like what an elongated that? like you hold yes. coming as long as possible yeah, it's well, like part of it. Yeah, it's like it's it's I mean, it's like not changing the relationship that you have with sex, but it's a it's a type of like a practice of like increasing the arousal of sex itself through like, you know, 
different types of touching and, and eye contact and certain things like that. Okay. Yeah. Pause. It was weird. We made eye contact while you were saying that. Yeah, it was that. nice, right? <laughs> did, you, did you feel something? That, so that, that, Are we about to get that, monkey pox? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah, get monkey pox. <laughs> so that works for uh, if you're going through a dark time right now. Tan you said tantric. Tantric sex. sex. Okay. Yeah. Check. Wild card answer, but yeah. it works. No, that wasn't whatever real. Works, that wasn't what I had. That wasn't what he's gonna say. Go ahead. I'm not, this is a. We, it's weird. It's not tantric sex, but I was gonna say, um, dude, I used to do this thing when I would get into these like really nasty situations because some of mine are just ridiculous, bro. Like when you're like, dude, I would have these situations where like if you read my book, you know, like I'm handcuffed in the middle of the street in the middle of traffic. There's 20 narcs around me. My ankle's hanging off because it's shattered and the bone is poking through the skin. I'm on the ground for three hours, spitting up blood, like all fucked up. And I've had situations like that my whole life. Been on every ICU table, almost bled out three times. And I would always be in these situations and I would tell myself to like I connect with the inner warrior that is in you. It, it was, I, I don't know how to explain this because I've never really explained this and, and I didn't really talk about this in the book, but when you start to get, this is fucked up, but like, it's almost like finding a way to be happy when you're getting punched in the face over and over again. It's a kind of like sick, I like it's kind of sick. I feel like you could relate to this. It's kind of BDSM talking about. we're talking about. Yeah, it's like instead. fucked up. Like you're, yeah. you're almost like, oh yeah, that's what you fucking got. Give me a fucking other, yeah. give me another, give me another because I'm just gonna come out on the other side anyways. Like if you can connect with that, like, that back against the wall desperation mentality where you're fucked up on the street and you're bleeding, you're fucking addicted to fucking hit, whatever the fuck is going on in your life. Yeah. And you're just battling through that shit day after day after fucking day. And you get to this point where it becomes habit where you know no matter what the fuck gets thrown at you the next day, you're just gonna come out on the other side. Yeah. If you can connect with that inner warrior that's inside of you, that shit never goes away. And then when you do get through that darkness, which you will, and you will come out on the other side and days will get brighter and the light will get stronger and everything will get better in your life. Now all those little minor inconveniences of life mean nothing. They're yeah, little bug true. bites because you've been through some real shit. You went, you fucking made it through 16 eye surgeries. You made it through the most, you know, tr biggest tragedy of, the, of your life and you lo lost someone that was dear to you, bro, in your childhood that you needed for your fucking life, right? Yeah. Or you battled eight years or nine years as a, as a heroin addict and the shame and the sadness and the sorrow of that day after day fucking war and you just kept crushing yeah. every single day because you connected with that innate warrior that is in all of us. I love that That's one. fucking, dude, if you can do that, bro, you're, you're gonna make it. Yeah, that's amazing, man. I, I That's incredible. And I, it's funny when you said that, like that thought, because I've had that just through the gym and I practiced that through the gym. And that's how I like dealt with a lot of shit was like, just like, almost the idea that no matter what the fuck I'm going through, I know I can get through it. Cause like, if I can get through this, if I can get through this, and it was just an everyday like meditation practice, but it you're absolutely right. Gives you even more strength. Like yeah. every time you make, you get stronger and stronger. Yeah, I love it, man. That's the best answer. That was good. You crushed that. was really that. good, Mike. Thank you, Mike. That alpha brain, you we, just reached your flow state. <laughs> Yo, you're like six hours ago. Okay, one more. Okay, so this person says, what makes life worth living and what are, or what, are you most proud of? Okay, two two different questions. Pussy there. I, and I guess money. I, I, Let's go. <laughs> Bugattis. Yeah, pussy and money. Duh. No, Bugattis. I feel like we should say having kids, right? Isn't dude? That I feel like that's the that's what where I'm coming to. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the what, first question. What's the point that's of life? What our, our, I don't know. Well, we're just gonna start shooting it off. You know, what it's makes like, life worth living? <laughs> Okay, let's fucking get deep then. Let's, All right, go ahead, let's, Jeff. This is your question. Your first question. Go ahead. You got this, Jeff. Finally. Go ahead, Jeff. Let's go, baby. Well, I'm just going off saying having children because that's what everybody says. Okay. You know, and I, when I ask people, my elders, my inspirations, that's what they say. Mike. No, Mike wouldn't say that. Mike would probably say um, just, podcasting. Andrew Tate. I love that's probably what you know. Dude, I Andrew, love this shit. I love it. Yeah. yeah, Bugattis and Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate makes life worth living. Don't cut that out. <laughs> Yo, don't don't cut, 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 cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Clip it. No, no. I, I stopped it. it when I was saying it because I know it'll get clipped out by his people with affiliate links in the fucking thing. I'm Yo. not selling that shit. Yo. No, no. That shit's funny. No, I know. 500 not. visitors to the Hustlers I Academy. Fuck, man. I'm part of the problem <laughs> yeah this joke. is so funny uh well, it's such a hard question i guess um purpose i'll answer it i think it's purpose because all the things we're going to say next 
give a human purpose, whether it's a kid or, or something that we want to do with our lives. It doesn't matter. Podcasting, fucking Hustlers University, Andrew Tate, like whatever jokes. Mm -hmm. It's all about purpose. The whole fucking reason that we're here is to find some sort of purpose within, within and of ourselves. And at the same time, the next thing, the only other thing that actually matters, the thing that actually truly only really matters is love and sharing Clout. it. Share. No. <laughs> Money. Is love. Okay. And get and giving it and receiving it. And that's all that really matters. Yeah, I think I need to feel that feeling yeah. again yep. to yeah. refresh yep. my mind. Love, yeah. purpose. There's different versions of it though, right? Like uh, the I was appreciation. Say podcasting. Yeah. I don't fucking know. I love How you long guys, have we man. been? This is four hours? No, per, no, but purpose, but purpose. Uh, <laughs> you got, you're so funny, man. You're my favorite, Joe. He's hilarious. Go ahead. Take this one. No, he no, answered I, it. Purpose I know. He's, 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 he nailed he's it, right, bro. Yeah. And he summed it up so short. That was such a perfect answer. Bradley wins. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to win. I'm just you, trying to. You, know, you won, bro. I'm just trying you to win. No, that's good. That's next question. That's good. Yeah. That's it, bro. What, else, what more can you add? No, on that's that? fine. I, I agree. I mean, I just I, I was just gonna say no, it? nothing. No, nothing. Well, now I'm not gonna say anything. You just made me feel like an asshole. Jesus, Jeff. What the fuck, man? No, oh, bro. I, I mean, uh, now I'm the piece of shit, Jeff. Hey, we got you the shortest, best answer. Have purpose. No, it was great. Yeah. No, it was good. Jeff's but then he perfect. said love, and that got me ticking a little bit. But it's fine. Lo what was yeah. the next part? No, no, no. That's it. Say your goodbye. I just well, but you love said still falls under purpose because you now you have purpose because you love that person. It's he nailed it, bro. There's nowhere else to go. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, we could. I guess we just go home. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, so sign us out. Part to that question. No, are there any more fan submitted questions? No, that's it. That's oh, that it. was we the last three. one. No, no. Well, there was. It was like two and one. But if you guys want to stop it there. And how? What's the last one? The, what's the part, Mike's the net part worth? of it was like, what are you most proud of? Oh. Because that was part of it. There's oh. Like one, yeah. What am I most proud of? I have my. my you know what? Mending my relationship with my uh, mother and my um, and my grandmother. That was something that I am most proud of because one time I sat them down back when I was living in Connecticut and I you're a fucking asshole bro. you're not just gonna tell my story <laughs> yo you are you're fucking such a, clever no, bro. I'm sick this. in the head I'm off that this was shit. clever I'm bro, off dark no, no, no because he knows I, that's my answer I knew what Mike dark. was coming with so I tried I to take his before I got to him sick. and then I was gonna Eminem him Dude, you know an 8 mile when, when he goes up there and he wraps all his shit I fuck with you Stick with I, yeah, I grew up in a trailer with my mom, you know, yeah. and then he comes back to him and he's stumped. So nah, stick with, nah, stick with Tana. I'm done with you, bro. Dude, no, bro, we you're, shoot, you're like, off your meds. We gotta shoot Sunday. We have to do another one of these. We babies. are. We're doing one in fucking Joshua Non-stop. That's stars. the point of life, baby. Oh, that's Podcasting. Lit. Yeah. That's the point of life, podcasting. We're out. Yeah. Sign out. Sign out. Give us a sign out. Tell him to go subscribe, all that good shit. Yo, guys, thank you for uh, watching this or listening to it, whatever platform you're on. Yes, sir. Uh, go check out Mike's book, The Fifth Vital. It yep. changed a lot of lives. Um, check out my pomade. It will change your life even more Man. better for the better <laughs> because it can fix anything. It's the best hair product in the game. Yes, sir. And also, Podcast of Champions, we are the fittest, most athletic. I can't speak anymore because of my tongue injury, but I'm still here going, baby. Um or podcast of champions we challenge any other podcast to a physical challenge anything you want if it's fuck anything but wwe wrestling i i don't want to get Brad, mixed up that. in that um yeah you don't pull want ups me. i'll do more pull-ups than any other podcast are out there i could do 30 straight oh fuck how okay. many can you do those legs are too heavy i knew it yeah 26 oh that's pretty good yeah. that's fucking solid um a race i challenge any other podcast what to happened to the sign out uh, <laughs> um, I thought we had an opportunity to, to plug stuff. Do whatever oh, you want. I was oh plugging for you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, check out Roman fucking dick pills. <laughs> if you can't get hard, yo. Take I don't know, bro. Uh, culture, thanks for watching. It, Love you guys. Culture, yeah, go to Zoo culture. Raw Zoo culture. Talk. Yeah, we're out of here. That's it. That was fun. Bro. Thank you, dude. Thanks, bro. <laughs> appreciate you guys for coming, man. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Oh shit! Another one. That was, dude, you guys really go hard. That was, dude, you guys really go hard. Yo, the fucked up thing about it is, and I hate to say this, but I honestly can do another twelve hours. <laughs> I, I honestly, bro, I was—I swear to you, I was built for this shit. Yeah. Like this, this right here is what I was literally born. You want to talk about purpose? I was born to do this. Yeah, yeah. You that's just, why you, it kind of sucks just, that. That's why it kind of sucks that Impulsive is a one-hour show that we have to do two minutes per topic. And you have to interview a guest who gives a. Fuck.
just talk about your struggles. Is it really? Why, why is it structured that way? It's just a fast moving show. It's not a podcast. We call it an internet show. So it's just, it's, it's very fast moving. So okay. I'm kidding. I love it. We have a ton of fun and it's very rambunctious and spontaneous, but um, yeah. Yo, that's it. Subscribe to the channel, Raw Talk, every Tuesday, 11 a.m. I love you guys. I appreciate all the support. Remember, make sure you guys drop your questions. Yeah, that's it. I love you. Bro, that's my...